Welcome to Dwarven Forge. This is everything you need to know about our terrain in 60 seconds. Ready? Let's go. We hand sculpt our pieces for maximum detail and artistry, infusing passion into every millimeter of our work. Everything is available beautifully hand painted so you can start playing right away. Or you can choose unpainted to paint everything yourself. Our pieces are completely modular so you can use the same sets to create a new adventure every time. Most pieces have embedded anchor magnets that affix to our terrain trays for secure building and for revealing rooms as your players discover them. We create everything out of Dwarvenite, our top secret PVC formula that's nearly indestructible. We pack our pieces with as many features as possible, such as swappable LEDs to quickly change the look of your scene. We offer magnetic accessories to add flavor or increase the danger. A one inch tactical grid is sculpted into our floors, hidden in dungeon flagstones, natural rocks, or sticks and plants. In addition to sculpted pieces, we make terrain trays to use as a vibrant graphic base for your build. We offer a range of environments, including dungeons, caverns, cities, castles, sewers, forests, mountains, streets, burrows, ice, and hellscape. And that's just the beginning. We have a passionate fan base who can tell you all about it. And that's everything you need to know about Dwarven Forge in 60 seconds. The games we play are the stories we create. The fortress doors swing open. Every story is unique. And the sound of war drums rises. Sometimes our stories come to us when we least expect them. to be ready no matter where inspiration strikes. And sometimes our stories are told over great distances. No matter where your journey leads you or how your story is told. The games we play are the stories we create. Sirenscape can help make yours epic. Sirenscape is searchable, fast, and customizable from any device with no need to pre-install any sound. Adding epic atmosphere to your game has never been easier.
Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 10 of Into the Mist. It is our Curse of Strahd campaign. Uh, we had a week off because of Victoria Day. Today, you all in the States have a, um, what are they called? <laughs> Memorial Day. Memorial, it's Memorial Day. Day. A holiday. No, I, I think so. They're called holidays. Yeah, they're called. Did you forget to start the stream again? It's, that's what happens. You miss a week, and then my brain melts. Um, <laughs> Want to thank Dungeons and Dragons for creating this incredible game that we play week on and week out. Um, thank you so much for doing that and for your continued support. Want to thank Hero Forge, our main title sponsor for the show. Uh, they have an incredible online miniature creator and character creator. You can also use it to create avatars. You can check it out at www.heroforge.com for all of the wonder that exists. All of the player character minis that we use at the table are from Hero Forge and we want to thank them for that. I want to also thank our other main title sponsor, Beetle and Grimm's. They create premium, awesome Dungeons and Dragons content in box form. I will be getting my Van Richten's box. Matt said I will. So um, we will have that soon for you folks to show all the wonderfulness that exists inside. You can check them out at beetleandgrimms.com uh, and they have some amazing things uh, within all of their premium boxes. Also want to thank Sirenscape, our other main title sponsor. Uh, Sirenscape is an incredible online media player for adding uh, ambiance and sound effects to your tabletop RPGs. Uh, they have a lot of official Dungeons & Dragons stuff that we will be using tonight, as well as uh, a lot of Realmsmith stuff. So if you go to sirenscape.com slash Realmsmith, you can check all that out. You can search for Realmsmith in the search bar and you'll see all the stuff that we've created. I can't even have Zoom open on my laptop because Dave makes me distracted during the intro. Um, want to thank all of our product sponsors, WizKids for a lot of the miniatures at the table, Dwarven Forge for a lot of the terrain that we use and we'll be using some tonight. Um, Mithril Armory uh, sponsors our natural 20 rolls. Um, anytime a natural 20 roll is rolled, you will see that happen on screen and we thank them for that. Stoneheart I've seen lots of really cool things. Uh, you can check that out at stoneheart.ca. They are getting very close, is my understanding, to launching that Kickstarter. They are jewelry-esque dice made with precious gems and metals. So you can check that out. Also want to thank D&D Beyond as well. Um, and we have a huge announcement tonight. Um, the mists are fickle and they're not letting us leave. Tonight, we're announcing that instead of going to Tides in two weeks, we will be continuing Into the Mist for another season. There's a lot of Heck reasons yeah. why we're doing that. Uh, one of the reasons is because we've felt like we've gotten a lot of forward momentum um, with the Discord and with a lot of the cool things we're doing there, as well as with the cast and the narrative. So we want to not change gears um, right away and continue with another season. So you will get Into the Mist for three more months after this uh, finale in two weeks. We're going to take two weeks off and then we will continue into the mist again for season four, which we're super excited about. Uh, that was big. Um, Discord and the Patreon. For those of you that know we have a Discord server, uh, you can come check it out. There are a lot of open channels where you can chat generally about Dungeons and Dragons and finding games to play. But then we also have a patron only section for role playing. Uh, and you can become a patron at patreon.com slash realmsmith. You can create a character at various levels. We have a lot of awesome content. Um, new soon will be a Tailweaver guide. Tailweavers are our community DMs, and we have opened up a bit the ability for them to create encounters in a lot of the tier specific areas. Um, and so that will be launching very soon. And I know the, tail the weavers are very excited about that at the various levels. Um, I'm also going to release this week two new loyalty benefits for our Masters of the Realm and our Legendary Heroes. For Masters of the Realm, if you're with us for six months, I will illustrate a character image like I do for the cast for your character in the Discord. Um, that is a one of one creation that I will create for six months. If you're in for 12 months at the Legendary Hero, so sorry, let, that is for Master of the Realm and Legendary Heroes, just exclusively for Legendary Heroes, if you're with us for 12 months, I will 3D print your Vistani character, hand paint him and send him to you. So those are two new loyalty benefits that we are adding for those top two tiers. We actually had three people um, upgrade to Masters of the Realm in the last week. Um, so we're thankful to have you guys aboard uh, at that level. 
Um, but thank you to all the patrons. You guys help us to do what we do. We couldn't do this without you. Um, and the way that this thing continues to grow on the Discord, we're getting new members every uh, day, really. Um, and just we're super thankful for that. Tonight, our giveaway for the evening is a Brothers Forged Legendary Rod of Initiative, just like this one. They have custom created a Rod of Initiative. Uh, we just got Travas added, and we also got Noggins added. And they've also sent me um, one that says Strahd von Zarvich. <laughs> Um, no! And it has a little skull on it. <laughs> uh, but anyways, we're not going to use that tonight. Of course. Burn it. Uh, Burn it. That will come into play at some point. But anyways, these are incredible. The way that they work is these are all um, magnetic. And they also have a little sword on the other side. So when it's the next person's initiative, you just move it down. Uh, it's going to be amazing when we're at the table together. Um, and everyone at the table is able to see what the initiative order is. In order to be entered to win a Rod of Initiative, all you have to do in the chat is enter the word brothers. B-R-O-T-H-E-R-S. That is once, more than once, you'll be disqualified, but you will be entered, and at the end of the stream, we will be doing a draw for your choice of Rod of Initiative. There's a bunch of different choices. You will get a choice uh, as the winner for that. So we want to thank Brothers Forged for that, um, and we're so uh, uh, happy to show off amazing um, knickknacks and trinkets and game aids like this on our stream. Uh, I want to thank our Smith Guardians as usual. They work tirelessly creating modules and managing the Discord and the community for us, um, as well as the Realm Watchers, who are our moderators. They are in the chat, both on YouTube and on Twitch, um, and they will answer any questions that you have uh, throughout the session and in our Discord experience. Uh, we do have merch. That is another way that you can help to uh, support the stream. Uh, there's lots of fun t-shirts, but launching today for the uh, month of June and then from there forward, we have our pride gear and we're very excited to support um, and represent and we have launched that now that is available in the link below on YouTube. I don't think it's there, but if you click through to the our merch store, you'll be able to pick up a variety of different Realmsmith pride gear um, from there. Uh, Aftermath on Thursday is a semi-spoilerific look and question and answer period hosted by Hillary Z, and it will have members of our cast discussing this past episode, this current episode that's happening, and the past season, and any other questions you might have. Um, but it's a fun little uh, behind-the-scenes look at the way the things go here at Realmsmith and on the stream. If you like what you see tonight, definitely consider subscribing on YouTube and hit that bell icon to be notified when we go live. As well, you can follow us on Twitch. Uh, that helps everyone to kind of know what we're doing uh, and let people know about the awesome community that we have here. Uh, also, make sure that you like that video. Uh, and liking the video really helps to bring it up the algorithm and YouTube and all that fun stuff that we need for people to know that we exist. Without further ado, let us venture into the mists.
<laughs> Welcome back, cast. It's been Yay. a little while since we've been here in Barovia. Uh, it always, Ooh. I always feel it when we miss a week. Um, mm. And uh, but we're back, and we're excited, and we'll see what you all get up to this week. Um, yes. And I love you guys. Like I really, I'm... honestly, Aww. love you guys. We're all, we're all friends. Jay, Can you not? Felt the same. <laughs> I love the cast too. <laughs> what is love? I don't know her. It must be a local. What's love got to do? <laughs> all right. <laughs> Last we left you all, you guys wore, were, wore, you were wearing, were, uh, in Argen Vostholt, um, the estate mansion uh, keep that the Order of the Silver Dragon uh, was a part of or have inhabited for the last 400 years, or the remnants thereof. Um, you had done away with the Order and set them to rest as you lit the beacon of Argen Vost, and then you proceeded to tour and take a look at the existing um, estate, which is now being maintained by Sir Godfrey, who, unbeknownst to anyone, has le has been the reasons thereof, uh, doesn't necessarily know why he was left behind and why he wasn't set free from Barovia like his brethren were. Rip. Yeah. Mm. Um, during that process, you met a Dusk Elf by the name of Savid, who uh, was very injured was then healed and then became very injured again when um, Sterling, or a part thereof, uh, attacked him in the foyer. Um, there was a scuffle, there was some words exchanged, but you found out that Savit is a member of the Dusk Elves, who is a dying race of elves who live with the Vistani just south of Velaki. You proceeded to tour, as I mentioned, uh, Argon Vostholt. You cleared the first floor of some spiders that were um, taking up residence in the in the east wing of the estate, and then began to head upstairs. For the sake of brevity, um, at this point, we can tour the rest of it, um, but there are some key areas that are of note. Otherwise, you guys have the map within the Discord community. You have an Argon Vostholt area that you can take up residence. Uh, and role play in when you have some downtime uh, in order to be able to kind of make it your own or fix it up or whatever you want to do. But it is now your layer, um, as Bone Grinder didn't really serve that purpose as much. Um, this may be a bit more beneficial to the party. Um, we left you all kind of on the second floor. You were looking um, as Travas. Well, you weren't looking at Travas, but he went and used the restroom um, as you all kind of came to terms with the um, occurrences and the time that you had spent in the last couple of days doing what you did. Um, the areas of note, um, first of all, your main purpose obviously is to search for the tome, correct? That is kind of the yes. main purpose of what you wanted to do. Um, let us go there. In order to do so, um, you kind of searched through the second floor. Uh, you had been through some of it already. You went through the study where you saw that leaflet out of the journal of Argenvost and then passed through that study to see and meet uh, Godfrey for the first time. Um, one area that is of note on this floor is what you ap what appeared to be appears to be some sort of knight's quarters. Um, tattered and faded drapes cover the windows of this circular room, and empty torch sconces line the walls. Broken bunk beds and armor stands are strewn on the floor. Um, very old, quite in disrepair. Um, but upon searching this room you actually find buried under the wreckage a small wooden coffer containing four potions of invulnerability. Um, apart from that, there is nothing else left in the chamber. You search the rest of the floor. Um, throughout this floor, you do find a couple of bed chambers, one that appears to be a guest chamber. Um, and a couple of knights' quarters or barracks. There's actually two of them in two of the towers that exist at the top of Argenvost on the northern end of it. You head up to the third floor. 
and upon reaching kind of the top of the stairs there, across from, and if you remember correctly, where you met with Godfrey, he said through the door to the left uh, was the audience chamber. As you make your way into the audience chamber, let me bring that up. The west wall of this 50 foot long, 30 foot wide audience hall has crumbled, leaving a gaping hole in a pile of rubble. Weapons and shields that once hug, hung from the walls have fallen to the floor and succumbed to rust. A large wooden throne carved to resemble a dragon with unfolding wings faces three tall windows to the west. And this is where Vladimir spent most of his time, uh, or at least where um, Godfrey said that that occurred. Uh, what do you do? I said, wow, this room is amazing. And I want to run and sit upon the chair. Okay. So Travas uh, crosses the room quickly. As you come around the throne, you see that oh. there is a thick... No, just relax. Okay. You see that there okay. is a thick tome, <laughs> leather bound, that sits on the arm of the chair um, and with a silver symbol on it. Uh, a very worn, old, ancient tome. Also hanging from one of the um, ends of the uh, kind of the headrest of the throne is what appears to be a holy symbol, um, an amulet in the shape of, a, of the sun. And you know, Travas, being Barovian, um, that it is an amulet to the Morning Lord um, and some sort of holy symbol. So <clears throat> as, I, as I sit down, I'll... I'll take the book and I'll open it on my lap <laughs> and be like, wow, that is a big book. And I'll take the the necklace pendant. Yep. What did you call it? Yeah. And I'll be like, wow, it's a, it's for the morning Lord. And I'll put it on and I'll I'll try to read the book out loud from whatever random page I. OK, like as if I'm addressing the audience, which okay. is the party. All right. And so th this book, this this. This throne um, faces opposite from the door that you came in and looks out over windows that overlook the valley. Um, and so all you see is Travas kind of disappear behind the high-backed throne um, and you hear a jingle and you hear the opening of a book. What do you all do? Uh, I would like to just smack Travas on the back of the head and just say, show some respect. Okay, so you come up and you smack him. Okay. Do you allow that to happen, Travas? Sure, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she smacked you on the back of the head. Okay. Uh, I, I, what, what is wrong? I just, I was just reading the book. It's like I'm a king. You're not a king. And I'm many have not. died. Show some respect. Okay. Uh, I'll close the book and I'll stand up and, and motion to her to have a seat. You can sit first if you want. No, <laughs> I don't, I wouldn't even know. I don't even know that I am worthy of such a thing. I just, you can read it. I just meant that this is not, these are not parlor games. These are not, this is not a cause for celebration. There is still people suffering. And you all recognize, uh, as you all, I'm assuming you all kind of start to gather around the throne. Um, yeah. you, all, you all quickly recognize that the crest on the front of the tome is actually the same crest uh, on the back of every Barovian coin. Um, mm -hmm. And on one side is the visage of Strahd von Zarvich. On the other side is his family crest, the von Zarvich crest. I will say that Esmeralda, as very much as she has studied her whole life for the, you know, to gain knowledge very much feels unworthy of being the person to, to read this book. Okay. Hey, Jay, do we have a sense like this book is special beyond special? Like, obviously we've come to find it. Is there, is there any way to identify kind of extra information about it? Uh, give me an arcana check perhaps, or a history sure. check. If you're trying to, depends on what you're trying to glean from it. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out, Is it, like I am trying to figure out if it has magical properties, if okay. it's cursed, do we have any inclination of where its origins are? Sure. So give, what would that be? Give me an Arcana check first, and then maybe a history okay. check after that. 
Noggins is going to just kind of just slowly appear above Falfer. Okay. Tw- 24. Doing? Oh, never mind, because he was going to cast Guidance. But uh, don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> that was a 24? Yeah, 24. For Arcana? Yep. Okay. Um, it appears to, to just be a mundane book. Uh, bound in leather, th- uh, thick steel hinges and fastenings, um, and made of parchment that seems quite brittle. Hmm. But it certainly does not have any uh, special properties, or at least not from what I can tell. Uh, perhaps uh, we can determine... Oh, well, what is that seal there? That's that's the same that's on the back of uh, of the coins here in Barovia, so... Wait, does this belong to Strahd? <sighs> Wait. Can I take a look at it now? Yeah, after absolutely. Having... Yes, I, now that I hand it's it not a you. sacred book, yeah. um, should I make an arcana or what? What would you like me to? Um, give me an invest. What are you trying to uh, figure out from it? Are you just? I I just want a general sense of what this book is. Now that we know that it's not sacred, but it it yeah. is Strahd related. Yeah, give me an investigation check. Dirty twenty. Okay. Um. It's written in a curious shorthand um, that seems kind of like rambling, um, but age and stains have made most of the work illegible. But there's several paragraphs that remain intact and readable. Um, the first of which starts with, I am the ancient. And there's a couple pages of, of legible text. I'm gonna um, walk up to Travas and I'll say, uh, uh, the amulet, uh, give it to me, son. Uh, okay. And uh, I start to take it off. Why am I giving this one to you? Well, I've, this is my first amulet we've encountered and I'd like to take a closer look at it. Okay, you can see it and uh, he hands it. Hands it to Dimitri. Okay, Dimitri, give me a religion check. Okay. Natural 20. (gasps) Yeah! It is absolutely a holy symbol. Um, It doesn't have any inherent magical properties, um, but you imagine it's worth about 250 gold, um, and it is a sunburst in the form of the Morning Lord. And you know that okay. the chapel that exists in Ark of is to the Morning Lord. Okay. Uh, the Morning Lord, you know. I'll, I'll hand it back to Travas. You uh, keep this safe. Uh, puts put, puts more- it on and like tucks it inside his shirt. Are we? Oh, so we're all hearing each other's conversations yep, here. Yep, you're, all, this- you're all yeah, you're all you're all gathered around the throne. Yep. So I'm, I, I turn to uh, to Dimitri and go. Is it is it not strange to you that uh, an amulet of the Morning Lord would be in the same location as a book dedicated to Strahd? It seems very odd. No. Hmm. Yes, I I would assume that whoever was reading the book would be hopefully in in this place trying to discern a way to um, defeat him. Did, didn't you all just um, deal with something that was here? Um, maybe it was theirs, and maybe they held the book like to protect it or something. Hmm. Probably right. Yes. Wise was words. Just smart. Oh wow. <laughs> I would. I mean, yes, you were actually. That's quite insightful. Does it look like the? Is this book written by Strahd? Yes, you imagine it is. It 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 appears to be a personal journal, of sorts. Can we decode what it says? Do no, absolutely. We, is there, it... there is there is, at least two pages that are is written in common. Um, again, and and the first sentence starts with "I am the ancient, I am the land," and you can read it if you like. 
Can we? Yeah. yeah. Is that okay with everyone? Too. Yeah. Yeah. From Beetle and Grim, the two pages <laughs> of the oh, Tomo Strahd. Love it. Bear with me, it's lengthy. I am the ancient, I am the land. My beginnings are lost in the darkness of the past. I was the warrior, I was good and just. I thundered across the land like the wrath of, of a just God. But the war years and the, and the kiffing years, kiffing? Okay. Years wore down my soul, wore down my soul as the, sorry, this is, it, it's hard to read. It's a little dark in the studio. Um, as the wind roars, stone into, no, sorry. As the, as the wind wears stone into sand. You know what? I'm just going to bring up what it says on my laptop mm. real quick. But this is awesome. If you guys had this here, you can all read it. It'd be awesome. It's really cool. All right. Yeah, we could say we read it if we don't, if we don't need no, to. No, it's probably important. For the sake of brevity. <laughs> it's, it's probably important information. Give me a does, does the letter say we win in the end? Yeah, <laughs> That's no. all I care about. <laughs> Um, yeah, I was, I was good and just. I thundered across the land like the wrath of a just God. But the war years and the killing years wore down my soul as the wind wears, wears stone into sand. All goodness slipped from my life. I found my youth and strength gone, and all I had left was death. My army settled in the valley of Barovia and took power over the people in the name of a just God, but with none of God's grace or justice. I called for my family, long unseated, from their ancient thrones and brought them here to settle in the castle Ravenloft. They came with a younger brother of mine, Sergei. I was, he was handsome and youthful. I hated him for both. From the families of the valley, one spirit shone above all others, a rare beauty who was called perfection, joy, and treasure. Her name was Tatiana, and I longed for her to be mine. I loved her with all my heart. I loved her for her youth. I loved her for, the, for her joy, but she spurned me. Old One was my name for, to her, elder and brother also. Her heart went to Sergei. They were betrothed, the date was set. With words she called me brother, but when I looked into her eyes, they reflected another name, death. It was the death of the aged that she saw in me. She loved her youth and enjoyed it, but I had squandered mine. The death she saw in me turned her from me, and so I came to hate death, my death. My hate is very strong. I would not be called death so soon. I made a pact with death, a pact of blood. On the day of the wedding, I killed Sergei, my brother. My pact was sealed with his blood. I found Tatiana weeping in the garden east of the chapel. She fled from me. She would not let me explain, and a great anger swelled within me. She had to understand the pact I made for her. I pursued her. Finally, in despair, she flung herself from the walls of Ravenloft, and I watched everything I ever wanted fall from my grasp forever. I have studied much since then. Vampyr is my new name. I still lust for life and youth, and I curse the living that took them from me. Even the sun is against me. It is the sun and its light I fear the most. But little else can harm me now. Even a stake through my heart does not kill me, though it holds me from movement. But the sword that cursed sword that Sergei brought, I must dispose of the awful tool. I fear and hate it as much as the sun. I have often hunted for Tatiana. I have even felt her within my grasp, but she escapes. She taunts me. She taunts me. What will it take to bend her love to me? I now reside far below Ravenloft. I live among the dead and sleep beneath the very stones of this hollow castle of despair. I shall seal shut the walls of the stairs that none may disturb me. And that's it. He sounds like he has a personal problem. Many. Very well um, spoken, Travas, as you uh, as you dictated that for us. Thank you very much. Have I heard of this sword before? Yeah. So this, you imagine, is clearly the sun sword, 
that is the third item that Esmeral, uh, sorry, that uh, Madame Eva foretold that you were to retrieve. You've also, through your travels, ascertained its possible location and potentially with Sergei in Castle Ravenloft. Uh, certainly, since he hates youth and beauty, he is not going to like me very much. <laughs> wow. Sorry. Uh, but you're not um, very young. Hey. I mean, certainly I'm, I'm much younger than you, I think. Too. Also, Felfer, I feel like you're not his type. Right. Um, I'm just uh, in relation to Sergei, his brother who he killed for his beauty and his youth. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you have to admit, I am right up there. <laughs> you know, it does not matter. Let's move on. Um, I let he, him have this and I'm like, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> Obviously. Uh, so what what is crazy about this, though, is that um, is that Tatiana seems to have killed herself. Um, so that's, I'm not sure we knew that. Did we know that already? I'm not sure we knew that. Um, but then also that it seems that driving a stake through his heart will keep him in the a position, like he won't be able to move. So that's good. Good to is know. That so, is that something we could do in combat? Or do we have to catch him unawares to drive a stake in his heart? Yes, uh, I'm not he is sure. He's a powerful man. Certainly, if he cannot move, that must decrease some of his potential. Yes, but I feel like only for so long. And some of this you already knew, Esmeralda, being a trained monster hunter and, and under the tutelage of Van Richten, have kind of come to know some of the weaknesses of vampires. Is this the same for all vampires? Yes. But I see. for Strahd, it will not defeat him completely. We need the Sun Sword. Yes, the sword is a priority for us. During, yes. during this time, where is Savid? Probably dead in a corner somewhere. He, he's on Sterling's <laughs> leash, isn't he? I thought <laughs> Sterling was just dragging him around. Okay. I, I'm, I'm kind of keeping my distance. I, um, I, don't, I don't know if I was dragging him around. I thought he was with uh, one of you guys. Pretty he sure was with me. He was, was with you. me until he went into the restroom. Right. And so I don't know who would have led him out after. <laughs> well, so wait, are you saying he's still no, in the restroom? I, I, I mean, he could be. <laughs> no, I he's was in the restroom, and I was walking with Esmeralda, but Savid was being towed around by Sterling. I think I think that is correct. Okay. Well, it's not Thank towed. You, it's not towed around. At least um, tied, and Sterling was, you know, holding him. I'm not sure that he was tugging him around or anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. So where is he now? He'll be with me then. Okay. And he's just and quietly then, listening and looking around, and I'll have softened my uh, disposition with him feeling shame. Okay. So. We have a book that might be able to help us somehow with, with um, um, the, the vampire person. Uh, uh, do, we, do we go there now? Or, or... This is a very, very big place. I can hear the voice directly everywhere. It's a very, it's a very loud room. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> if the ceilings weren't so tall, it might uh, be better. It's yeah. the high vault. It's ceiling. fine now. Yeah. Sorry, there's something it's going beautiful. on. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> I love it here. It's quite nice. Well, it's it's gone now. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like we should go to the 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 castle. Right. Uh, well, not right away, though. I. We certainly need to know exactly where the sword is first. 
Mm. Yes, because I feel like if we went to the castle right away, we'd surely be walking into our deaths. I feel like. Well, I mean, we'll just wake up from be. the dream. Well, oh, Morgans, yeah, you listen. are you are very familiar with or know more about dreams and time, as it seems in some way that I don't understand, but is there a... Do you feel like there is a path that we must take? Um, normally, I am in control of my dreams, and I, I understand where I must go when I have to go. This isn't my dream. This is someone else's. So I don't really know. I just know I um, have to find that one person and they might be with Stride or something. So to me, it sounds like the best place would be to go to Stride. But if you all say we shouldn't go now, then I guess we're not going now. Time will come. We will meet Strahd and we will end his dream if it is indeed his. That would be nice because I would like to go home. Yes. Mm. I like, I, I, th- I think I like you all though, so I'm not trying to rush home, but I would like to, you know, wake up. That would be nice. Now, does anybody know of anyone we might be able to seek or speak to that might have an idea of where we would find the sword? If it is with Sergei. What about that guy back there? As he points to the elf. <laughs> and everybody kind of looks back and he's, his eyes kind of go wide and he kind of like itches kind of where the uh, wound was that Sterling caused. And he says, perhaps I know that um, my people have been around some time and Casimir knows much about him. Perhaps he has some knowledge that may help. Would he truly be willing to give us knowledge that may lead to the end of Strahd? Yes, there is no love loss for our people. He ended our people. We live in Barovia, biding our time, but it was him that caused the end of us all, eventually. Savit, I, I, I truly am sorry, and uh, I don't know how I could make it up to you, but if you think of a way, please let me know. Me I should not have done what I did. Give me a persuasion check. It's not rolling. Okay, I'm gonna use dice. Nine. Nine. He says, um, you, I don't understand the change in disposition, the sudden outbursts of anger and then kindness. And he looks around at the rest of you So that I am, uh, there's more than one mind in this body. There's eight in total. We allowed one to speak. And now the seven profoundly regret it. I am truly, truly sorry. But how do, how do... I will protect you the best I can. But how do I know, and how do the rest of your companions know when that other part might come to the surface again? I, I am still it's... tied, bound, when all I did was offer to help you all. I was very honest. In fact, you forced me to be honest, but I am still your prisoner. Perhaps as a show of good faith, you'll untie me. Do you do a perception oh. check on that? <laughs> Give me an insight check. Insight? Okay. 
Can I do an insight check too? Yep. Oh no, I rolled a nat one for a total mm. of four. You absolutely believe he's telling the truth. Uh, mine's a seven. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. I didn't want to do the whole stat, but I would ask to. <laughs> Anybody who would like well. to insight that. Okay, I got a 23. Oh, uh, we are struggling. The, 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 uh, 14 for Need me. to be on dice are horrible. Okay. No shade. I got a 23, though, so... Okay. If that um, counts. Yeah, so most of you aren't sure what to believe. Um, Esmeralda, you're absolutely convinced that he is telling the truth. Um, Sterling, you also feel um, really bad about what you did, um, given your the disposition of the rest of the amalgam. And um, are pretty convinced that he's scared enough for his life that he may not attempt to escape. But you don't necessarily know what his full intentions are in the long run. Yeah. While I do not 100% trust Sabbat yet, given the place that we are in and how little we know about him, I do think it would be a step of trust for us to untie him and maybe we can make our way towards friendship. I mean, he hasn't put up any fight. He must he be telling the truth. Yes. Have you all confiscated his weapons mm. as well? Oh, yeah. Oh, for I, I, sure. I'm Before sure that we yeah. would have, yeah. Okay. We By didn't now. say it, but... Okay. <laughs> no, of course we did. It would have been common sense, though, I think. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, I'll walk over to him, and um, I'll just look him straight in the eye and say, I think we will untie you, but... If you promise not to run like before, we will escort you to your people. You have we my can word. Give you, we can give you your weapons back once you are returned safely. I'll walk over to him as well, and seeing as Dimitri is three feet taller than me, I'll, I'll try to look him in the eyes. And I'll say, down here, come on, come on down. And uh, and to uh, to Savid, I'll say, uh, yeah, what Dimitra said, and I'll walk <laughs> away. <laughs> when I say this group confuses Noggin so hard, <laughs> uh, I can't wait till we Noggins all get to know is him a better, little so. confused on his own. To be fair, <laughs> you're correct, and this is not helping. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to collect the, the I'll rope. Start him. It's my rope. Yeah, yeah. I, I gotta make sure I get my rope back. Okay. And he starts to kind of massage his wrist and he says, I'm torn because I believe that Casimir can potentially have information that may help you in this quest that you have. At the same time, I was tasked with finding Arabelle, as were many of us. And if I return and Luvash finds out that I wasn't successful and I have returned, don't know what he is capable of. Well, actually, I do know what he's capable of. But I do fear for my safety. So Why are you not, you... To, not supposed to come back until you find the dead girl? Or, or is that what that is? He made that fairly clear. So we should help you find Arabelle first. Is that what you're saying? Possibly. Was it your fault? Because that sounds weird. That she's gone? Yeah. No. Then why he's blaming you? Like he doesn't want you to ever go back, really. She could be inside of a whole bunch of animals. Noggins looks at he that and yeah, that, he, that he, comment. Yeah, he shoots you a, 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 a stare. I'm just trying to be realistic. If it was wolves, like, uh, what are you going to track down every wolf and every poop the wolves made? Oh, okay. well, not possible. Uh, um, Travas, maybe. Um, it is not. You don't have it, to. It, it's not that we are not putting finding her on the table. Like, she's still. I personally, at least, would still like for her to be found. But in the long run, don't you want your people to live freely and openly? 
again without fear of persecution. Yeah, but uh, yes, and I mean, our people are long lived. Many of us have been here. Well, all of us <laughs> have been alive since Barovia became what it is. Our hope is to outlive the current Vistani leadership and return to the old ways. Thing. And it is, yes. The only reason we live is because Strahd has entrusted those Vistani to watch over us. It is one thing to merely survive. It is another to live happily. Well, Travas would know more than anyone. I mean, I, I'm thankful for his young Barovian frankness. He has seen much, and he would know better than anyone that there is no living happily in Barovia. Not now, but that's what we're fighting for. You have to understand my skepticism after 400 years. That's perfectly valid. <laughs> Long time. But that is, that is exactly what we fight for. Because everyone in Barovia deserves to live and to live happily. I would like to step towards Sabid and, and talk very specifically to him. I'm not hiding it from the others. But I, I will say, Sabid, have you ever seen in 400 years a group like this? Like the Dawnbringers? There has never been, that I know, a group capable of defeating Strad. As he have says that, as, as Travas says that, like Falford turns from being like just listening posture to like hero posture. <laughs> like good. Young boy, you have been alive. A speck in amongst this land, and I have seen many come and many die. Some came and left. There was a group specifically that came that we had hope in. An order of monster hunters some 10 years ago. And they made a deal and they left. Sounds that perhaps they weren't actually heroes then. Perhaps. They could leave this place the way it is and make a deal with an enemy. Would you Why did they make a could? deal? How many of you would not leave if you could? We were given the opportunity and we stayed. What? So that this we is could my fight. Homeland. This is my homeland and I will stay till the end, till I die. And I will fight for the day that everyone here can live happily, not merely just survive. You see Noggins is like, his face is not agreeing with that, <laughs> but he says nothing. He just. Savid, why, why did they make a deal? Why did, why would Strahd let them go? Was he afraid of them? They caused <clears throat> problems for him. And so he had a problem that needed fixing and they fixed it. And in return, he let them go. Did they light the beacon? No, they did not. Well, we have. You have? Strahd did made he... a deal with us. He wanted us to bring him his bride, Irina. We went against him. We freed her soul. He would have let us leave had we brought her to him. Hmm. I hope that speaks to you about who we really are. It does. Which is why I have offered to bring you to Casimir. I think that maybe, maybe he has some information for you. I am grateful, but we would not see you killed. I know that sounds strange coming from me. 
But yeah. um, it's strange, yes. <laughs> oh, sorry. I mean, it may sound strange, but perhaps you let me go and let me go find Arabelle. Can we help you find Arabelle? As a sign of good faith. Sure you yes. can. And an apology. Yeah, but as you know, I don't know if she still lives. It is You'll been... stand a much better chance with us at your side. Fair enough. At the very least, we will help you recover her remains. Yes. And put them to rest. Mitri, Jesus. <laughs> but what are the requirements, really? You have to bring her back? All of her back? <laughs> the rabbis! <laughs> try us! Try, try, we are offering to help. It's important to know what we are agreeing to. Listen, listen, those are details. If we find a piece of her, then we can find the rest of her. The, the point is the point is that uh, is that my friend Savid needs, well, I say my friend, our new acquaintance Savid uh, needs some help finding this uh, this Ariel from the Disney movie. No, um, Ariel oh, yeah. or Arabelle. Arabelle, she, she's uh, in, she's lost. And so perhaps this is a, uh, the fate bringing us our next quest. Uh, but is there anywhere else we need to be first? You, not, you notice while they're Everywhere. talking, Noggins has walked towards the door and he just kind of plops down and he starts, <laughs> he takes out his pan pipe. He mm -hmm. starts playing it softly. <laughs> he has checked out of this conversation. <laughs> Savid, will harm come to you if you don't find her? <clears throat> I th well, I've seen Luvash punish. I've seen him reward you. Don't know necessarily how he will, the ways that he will go, um, the things that he will do. It. He's quite um, unstable. Depends does he, on uh, does he have fault. a nut? Oh, sorry. It's not your fault that she had gone missing. I no. would think that looking at the rest of the party. Should you be in danger in any way? We will, I offer you my protection. As do I. Me too, me too, me too. Well, perhaps if we go and find her, then maybe, maybe that would help. Maybe he will listen. He would clearly be overjoyed if she still lives, if there is hope that she still lives. Then yes, yes, let us go. Let us find her. What, what clues do you have? Where would you go? I mean, I have searched most of the southern lands of Barovia, of the valley, the, the swamps and remnants of Berez. I've gone as far east as the village of Barovia and into the Svalik woods. The only area that I was going to go next was into the northern areas. I see. Uh, Mount Baratok, Lake Zarovich, those sorts of places. If we pass that way, would you mind if we stop by the bone grinder? Well, yes, of course. The, the old mill. We had, yes. We had cleared that place, but perhaps, do you think they might have returned and gone about their old ways? I do not. But our Vistani friends had told us, well, told me personally, that they will leave things there for us in the meantime. Until we tell them of our new address, I would imagine. S certainly, if we are going to face any more foes, there may be things there that uh, we could pick up for our, for our benefit. Yes. Right. I'm a little low on javelins myself. It would be good to stock up. Yes. That last combat, it left me very low on supplies. That reminds me, I think maybe we let's go back by the spider room and I'm going to get my arrows back before we go. Mm. Mm. Good choice. Yes. Uh, what time is it right now? Um, 7.57 ET. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Barovian uh, standard time. Yeah, you um, you arrived here in the morning, um, and you beat Vladimir, and that was probably a couple hours ago. So I would say it's kind of mid afternoon, and you took a, a, long, a short rest as well. 
So I would say it's probably mid to late afternoon at this point. Hmm. You check the sundial. I no saw idea. that. <laughs> we have um, late afternoon. We've also, been through. We toured. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. We've been through quite a bit on this day. Uh, would you mind if we spend the night here, or at least a, enough time to have a good sleep before we leave? I am at your service. Would All we right. be leaving in the middle of the night? If we rested now? It would be unwise, but I don't know if we should be going hunting for this girl in our current condition. But I will lean on all of you. What are your feelings? Yes, I, I do need some rest after today's battle. Battles. Um, and there are an abundance of sleeping arrangements here, unoccupied. I think uh, we could all benefit from that. Right. And we go as soon as we are rested. Yes. Or we'll the morning, happy. if people like uh, others are scared of the dark, which I am, of course, not afraid of the dark, not here or anywhere, for that matter. <laughs> I'm fine. Let's just sleep. All right. Um, you all leave the audience hall. Um, the only other area of uh, distinct importance um, is what you believe is Vladimir's bedchamber. Um, and it's clear that it is the most kind of opulent and most recently kind of occupied and lived in of uh, the areas. Um, light enters this circular room through five cracked windows. The light falls on a large dust covered bed in the center of the room. It's post topped with wood carved dragons. Two large, animals flank... it. <laughs> Two large animals flank the double doors. One is a brown bear standing on its hind legs, its claws outstretched. The other is a dire wolf, its face frozen in an evil snarl. Near the wolf lies an empty wooden chest. Recently polished and mounted on an armor stand is a suit of half-plate armor that once belonged to Vladimir. And you imagine that Godfrey has t collected Vladimir's armor and replaced it onto the stand that exists. Um, and you can tell that this room, though dust covered, is lived in. Um, and you do remember Godfrey saying <laughs> yeah, that this is his chamber and that he will remain here. Esmeralda, while she herself has accumulated some wealth over her years, uh, will seek the least comfortable bed chambers because she's afraid that comfort will make her weak. <laughs> I like it. Okay, cool. So <laughs> that is where she will sleep, wherever yeah. that may be. All right. And Not it, to being accustomed to comfort, I will choose the comfiest bed that I can find. So the comfiest bed is Godfrey's. Um, and in your time, you, you know... Does he protest? Yes, he absolutely does. <laughs> and he Fine. says, this is <laughs> I my <don't> protest. chamber. <laughs> You will not sleep here. Where's my wig at? <laughs> I said, close the door. I'll, I will take the second comfiest okay. bed. So um, you're, you managed to kind of, at this point, nothing is really, I mean, it's been 400 years. So a lot of the beds, the bunk beds, all of that sort of stuff is really broken. And, and so you're basically, until you are able to kind of bring new furniture into the place and kind of fix it up a little bit, you're probably sleeping on your bed rolls. Um, the open areas, there's an open tower uh, to the north uh, within Argenvost on the third floor. Um, and that is, you're told by Godfrey, where Argenvost slept in his dragon form. It's completely just open, circular, and um, dust covered, but that's, that's it. Um, then there's Vladimir's uh, bedchamber with the single bed with the, which you were not able to stay in. But on the second floor, um, there are two chambers to the north, which are the apparent uh, knight's quarters, which have broken bunk beds. And then there's another, there's two guest chambers, one with a kind of a double bed, um, but again, moth-eaten, and uh, another one with two kind of single beds in it. Those are the available chambers to sleep in. 
I'd like to go to the chamber that had the four potions of invulnerability and pocket okay. them. Okay. All right. Does anybody do you try and do that carefully when that ha- when you found them in the first place? Uh, well, nobody said that we grabbed them, so, so I'll just wait them. until I go okay. back to bed and I'll just yeah. stick them in my pack for the party's use. Okay. Ours. Okay. Which I'll... room has the best view of? Well, the outside. Is it the throne room? Um, the throne room probably has, yeah, the best view, um, absolutely. But it's also, on the third floor, There's there's been a cave-in from the roof, and you've all headed up to the roof as well, and there is one ballista, which is destroyed, and the other one, which literally, if you touch it, it will crumble as well. They're not in use. Uh, but there's a massive cave-in on the top floor in the roof that has caused a leak kind of all along the third floor. So you imagine the kind of the, the, the most sheltered area would be the rooms on the second floor, meaning the knights' chambers, which are which have window uh, five windows in kind of the tower area, and then the two guest rooms, which have less view but are a bit more comf- comfortable, and have uh, hearths that you could potentially start a fire in. Do do I sense that there would be any danger if I was to do my sentries' rests in the uh, throne room so that no. I can keep a view of? anyone that may approach. Yep, that's fine. Yep, and you get a good view of the front of, and and then the the valley ahead. Okay. As far as you can see in the mist. So I won't be in the throne, but I'll stand, you know, in a place where okay. I've got a really good view yep. of everything so yep. that I can alert everyone. Okay. Is there like oh. a bell or something in here that I can ring like, Ding ding! Somebody's coming. There was a tower, but it didn't. <laughs> it, there, there was a tower. I think that. Um, one sec, actually. Thanks for explaining um, the bell. What the bell does. Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, it's not room service. It's been a while. <laughs> the ding ding bell. You know. It was one that dings. It could have gone dong. You know, dong dong. You know, or ding <laughs> dong or. There's so many different right. kinds of bells, okay? So many um, combinations. The, there there yeah. absolutely is a kind of a bell tower where the beacon has been lit, uh, but there's no bell that exists anymore. Okay. Mm. Okay. Mm. It's not just at like least, missing. It's not the, functional. The... Yeah, no. I, so I I'm can gonna... like climb up there and hit my head on it or yeah. Sorry, okay. <laughs> and you do I'm see broken right shards up. of it kind of at the bottom of the of the stairs as it's collapsed. Hmm. Oh. I forgot to Sterling require a full rest or partial rest or what is the deal? It's a long rest, but I'm not actually asleep. I'm still conscious. So apparently essentially I'm just standing there uh, and I can keep watch and you know. Okay. Uh, I didn't know yeah. if it was a thing where we could switch off potentially to t- keep watch. We could, we could. It, I mean, that's something that we could RP out if you want. Okay. I'll yeah. do that. I'm going to set my bed roll up in the... You said there was a place where Argonvoss would sleep in his dragon form? Yep. Okay. I'm going to go in there. All right. And just as a way to sort of even just attempt to commune with Argonvoss as um, as I am now a knight of the Order of the Silver Dragon. Mm, I like that. Cool. Mm. Okay. Is there a is there a fireplace or a brazier in my room? So there is in the two guest bed chambers. So you can sleep in one of the guest chambers. There's one again with the double bed that is still kind of standing rickety, um, but you'd have to use your own blanket and so on. And then there's one with two beds in it that are across okay, the hall re- from each other. I'll return uh, to that room after gathering the potions. Okay. Um, is there fuel for the fire? You find bits of wood all over the nice just like remnants of furniture you've got to make a fire tonight because they say no fire at night uh, hags the light (laughs) or something like that (laughs) oh shoot good point oh the throne room is a fireplace right (laughs) Right. i'm i'm going to uh, falfer's going to sorry falfer's going to uh find his way to a room that's near where Esmeralda is staying, but not where Esmeralda is staying, just out of respect, but yeah. wants to kind of drum up a conversation at some point. Okay, so Esmeralda, sorry, where, where did you say that you were staying? Are we able to get um, the, the map up, uh, Julian? No. Oh. I don't know if we can do that, uh, the, of the third, f- second floor, sorry. That might make it easier for for visualization of what's going on. Um, as he does that, sorry, Esmeralda, where did you say that you wanted to? 
I had originally said that I wanted the like the least comfortable place. However, uh, being right. able to keep watch, I think if 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 me and Sterling can can take turns keeping watch, I think would be safe. Okay. So uh, the floor above, so where it says open to below, uh, the floor above that, right above that area, is where the bed chamber, uh, sorry, the the audience hall is. So you guys can stay in the audience hall if you like. It's got the best view of the of the outside. Falfer, you can also stay in that room as that's a big, large, open room. Um, cool. Again, there is like a, you can see that it's crumbled on the east end of the room there. Uh, to the left, you can see where the throne is, kind of in the center of the, of the building. Um, and so it's open to the elements, but, you know, you guys are used to sleeping in uncomfortable places. So uh, there is enough <laughs> cover on the east end, on the west end of the chamber that you're not getting rained on or, or anything like that. So the three of you want to stay in the audience hall. Travas, uh, you want to stay on the second floor in one of the bed cha- the guest chambers? Yeah, with the fire going. Okay. Um, do you want to stay in the one with the double bed, or do you want to stay in the one with the two single beds? Uh, sounds like I'm going to be sleeping on a bedroll anyways, right? Yeah. So I guess just a single bed. Okay. If we can get the second floor again. Map. Um... There you go. So yeah, you can see where that single bed or the double bed is on the on the left, and then the two single beds on the right. So you want to stay in the one on the left with the double bed. No, I'll, I'll stay in the in the other one with okay. the with the with the single beds. Okay, and you you are, maybe maybe somebody will join me. You managed to light a fire. Okay, Noggins, nice. where do you want to stay? Come on, Noggs, I'm by myself here. <laughs> oh, is there like? sad is there like a stable or something uh there was but it's it's rubble outside to the south of the of the keep is there Noggins, any, come, like, come share my room Noggins. is there any like hay or anything like that around not or something that, that's like yeah not that isn't completely moldy and i mean it wouldn't have lasted that long and there haven't been horses in that in that stable for it's hundreds so of years damp with all that mist too so um he would have went down to search for something like that and okay. seeing how it's kind of gross. He would have come back up and um, is this like, are people like starting the bed down? Yeah. Okay. Um, people would hear like almost like a whine. Like a, uh, uh, um, and he's actually going to find either Falfer or Esmeralda because they remind him of before a little bit and he's going to be very sheepish and in his tiredness he's actually going to wild shape into a goat okay and sleep at like the base of like where falfor or esmeralda is okay. he's so just going to in just... the so in the audience hall with them yeah okay all right Sorry, Travas. I was like, he he he's going to he's That's supposed fine. to to uh, to comfortability. Okay. Um, but yeah. I wanted to see what happened when you started dreaming within your dream. That's what I was curious about. Oh, interesting. Um, um all right. Um, for Savid, do you allow him to sleep wherever he likes? Ah, uh, Savid, Savid can sleep in my room. Hey, everybody, Savit, Savit, uh, I've got an extra bed if uh, you're all okay with that. Uh... Just given what I saw between Travas and Savid when they were in the room after the spiders, I'm going to squinty eye at them both and at Travas in particular for suggesting that they stay in the same room as a like a, are you sure that... This is going to be okay, everyone. I thought you trusted him, and you trust me, and um, I thought we could talk and, like, have pillow fights, and uh, we're both local, and... uh... Perhaps I'll stay in the room um, across the way, then. Uh, And he, at that point, kind of leaves and goes to the one with the double bed in it. (laughs) Yes by himself that's fine I'll be okay in this room alone okay okay as we as we uh, as we bed down 
as we kind of lay down, and I notice obviously that Noggins has uh, shifted into a small goat. Uh, I want to noted that he laid down normally and tried to go to sleep and just naturally shifted. He didn't even realize he did it. Oh, okay. Fascinating. Cool. I'll turn to Esmeralda and go, um, <clears throat> so, uh, do you think he's, do you think he can still hear everything we are saying? The little one, the noggins. Oh, noggins? Yeah, yeah. maybe. I don't know. I don't He's really just... know everything about Noggins. I just know he could do really cool things, but... Yes. Maybe? Quite... Why are you worried? What are you worried about? <laughs> no, I'm just... I'm just... Well, I mean, you know, like... Uh, I was going to say... Uh, Ezzy. <laughs> I'm sorry, do you mind? I know we've known each other for a while. Do you mind if I call you Ezzy? Yeah, of course. Ezzy, okay, Ez, it's all good. What? What nice. is it? Okay, perfect. No, um, it's just that... Uh, like we have known about your about your leg for right. quite some time now. We've known about it, but we have not mm-hmm. uh, had much chance to understand uh, what exactly happened or or um. You like, want to did... know what happened to my leg? As I like <laughs> very, with a lot of pride, just slam it down like right in front of his face. <laughs> you want to know what happened? Uh, I mean, we are, yeah, I and mean, it's, you know, it's like you're a friend and it's like, it's, it just feels like a missed opportunity to hear a mm. wonderful adventure story. Well, maybe the full story would be better in front of a fire, in front of a full crowd of people. But let's just say between you and I, there were eight wolves. And they got away with my foot, but I got away with all of their lives. Uh, And I wouldn't have it any other way. Uh, I I mean, it explains that time when when there were werewolves in front of the building and you kind of decimated them (laughs) almost single-handedly. It was pretty crazy. (laughs) The wolves and I don't get along. But I would say they may have won a battle, but I always win the war. Well, I am, uh, I will say this then. (laughs) Don't ever let me get on your bad side. (laughs) Oh, me and you? No, we're good then. (laughs) Okay. Okay, good. (laughs) It's good to be safe. You know, Uh, I just, uh, that's amazing. It's truly an amazing story. I mean, we should. Want to take a closer look? I, like, I, I very much like it's very well made. I'm no, very like it's it, it, it get, is impeccably made. Did you get it made or did you make it yourself? I would love to have you know take the take the credit for this, but no, this was a uh, uh, one of my Vistani friends. Okay, someone we know or, or or just just a, a crafts person that you know. Perhaps I'll let you know in the future. Oh, I like a good surprise. Okay. Well, anyways. But very well made and uh, very much good as new. But it's it's quite impressive. Those wolves definitely learned a lesson. (laughs) What do I see? What do I see as you like pull? Do you, is it like, fully articulating leg like oh yeah it it's a piece? beautiful and it is a beautiful like i mean i'm it's still obviously attached i like very much just pff, leg right in front of your face but the foot of it you see a very beautifully crafted wooden carved it almost like almost would if to the untrained eye blends in seamlessly and it is a beautifully articulated leg and i just move it freely very just it is almost like a trophy in a battle scar wow. and like when any time i don't mention it often but whenever esmeralda does get the chance to regale people with the with the tails it is very much like a i won obviously huh. And I'll show you something else. 
the viewers. I at pull home. out a, I pull out like what looks like a, a leather satchel full of like coins, but it's full of wolves' teeth. Eh. Wow. So this like it's uh, you that's are them. you are not you're not pretending. This is that's no. Wow. I mean, I embellish almost every single thing I say. <laughs> yes. That's, as well, you know, um, but this, it does not seem like you do that. Uh, wow. And I count out the teeth. Like, oh, maybe we're sorry. We might be waking the small one up. Uh, this is incredible, but thank you so much for going into it. I'm sorry I had not asked earlier. It's uh, okay. quite impressive. Quite impressive. All right. The Vistani are very artistic people. As you all settle in, um, what is the uh, the watch schedule that you and Esmeralda would like to do, Sterling? And Ezzy? Ezzy, I just called you Ezzy. Oh, that's <laughs> I like Ezzy. That's okay. I like Ezzy, too. I like Ezzy. Yeah. yeah. yeah can, Ezzy. can we all start doing Ezzy? <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we can't because, because of Esme. Like the in in Gacchus, who's yeah. named that because Esmeralda is Esmeralda. Yeah. Well, I thought it was pronounced Esme. Esme. Yeah, but Esmeralda Esme. is her, her full name. I've only seen it yeah. typed, if we're yeah. honest. Yeah. Uh, I like Ezzy. Really, Ezzy, it is. Really yeah. quick question: yeah. in the in the room, are we all like around each other in a way, like close-ish, within thirty feet of each other? I mean, that's a I would room. imagine we are. Yeah. I mean, it's a big room. I guess did I guess what you sure. Um, um, as, as these two have been talking, Noggins has been trying to sleep and he really couldn't sleep. Uh, but you know, he kind of gets up and kind of trots and, 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 and ends up shifting back into his normal form, but he still gets kind of huddles. Um, but as he does, um, uh, you all, as he's starting to doze off again, you all notice, um, kind of. Well, his eyes, they glow for a moment, and from his being, a um, it's invisible, but there's a shimmer to it, even especially because of Barovia, it's kind of gross now, uh, but an invisible 30-foot radius sphere appears as I use my Hearth of Moonlight and Shadow. Um, uh, anyone within that will get a plus five to your dex stealth and your perception checks, and any light from open flames within the sphere are not visible outside of it. Cool. So How long it does it a, last? the entire rest um so uh um, we have to stay within the zone i have to stay within the zone uh but as long as you're in the zone you will get those things uh but i'm saying I'm, if we're resting and you're right and you're watching you will get that those bonuses to the watching um so does it, it go through walls it does not go through walls um so it's actually says total cover blocks us here um so it's just kind of in the open area and and he just and you can sorry you can see inside the sphere people can see inside um sorry one second one second one second uh it's such a weird thing i think they can't or like it blends into the to the area um it's, it just gives you extra cover. It more so is like like a like like a like a, like a almost like a mirage type of thing, but okay. it's not actual cover. Okay. You just get an extra chance of being stealthy within. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, okay. So what? Sorry. Watch schedule for the long rest. Who's taking the first watch? Um, I, I guess I will. I, I technically don't have to like stop watching. I could just stay there. Um, but. If if it turns out that Ezzy would like to uh, have some privacy on a watch, then like Sterling would be perfectly fine going to another place with a good view to to continue. It's fine. It's I I will at some point just keep watch, knowing that Sterling is doing what Sterling okay. has to do. But you want to sleep first. I, I'll I'll take I'll take some rest first. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. So you all settle in. Um, Dimitri, can you give me a perception check, please? Uh, 18. Okay. With an 18, um, as you kind of settle in, I'm assuming you've rolled out your bedroll and you kind of settle mm -hmm. in. Is there anything that you do before you, you said that you kind of wanted to commune and, and kind of get a sense of the area. Is there anything specific? Yeah. So I 
I'll just sort of take in the surroundings a little, as well as um, my new sword that I got from Godfrey. I'll I'll like look at it, study it closer, and just sort of have it lying next to me. Okay. All right. As you close your eyes, um, sleep begins to take you. Um, and just at the moment when you're about to fall asleep, you hear um, what sounds like <clears throat> and it's actually quite comforting. It almost sounds like a sleeping beast of large size. And you kind of come to, and the warmth of sleeping in this chamber it's almost like the echoes of a slumbering Argenvost. And you immediately feel the sense of warmth and comfort as you fall into slumber. Falfer, as you sleep on your bedroll, as Merelda, maybe some five, six feet from you, and noggins off a little ways as well. Um, give me a perception check. Oh, Falford or myself? Falford. Oh. You're sleeping. Yeah. You're at plus that, five. That's a twenty-six. Add plus five. And that's uh, a thirty-one. <laughs> nice. With a thirty-one. Um, <laughs> Your eyes open, distinctly having heard laughter. Okay. Kind of a... Hey. <laughs> and as you um. wake, it is quiet in the room. Sterling stands at the window, facing outward. Again, you hear. <laughs> Sterling. Yeah. And I'll try to. No. I'll try to rise him out of his thing. Okay. As you, she's back. As you you wake up, you say Sterling. Yeah. No. So I'm just sentry's rest, so I can just turn into yes. You don't hear it, Sterling. No. No. Hmm. I'll say she's here again, Sterling. Like, he didn't say it out loud, or like... And as you say it, Falford, your words almost get kind of caught in the wind. And as you're sitting up, you look back down and you see the sleeping body of Falfur behind you. And I, I yell out um, uh, a halfling expletive. Gargant! <laughs> and... and <laughs> I'm just like, just like exasperated this time. I'm like, no, no, not again. Not this time. I'm just going to go back down and lay down in my bedroll. And you sneaky old witch with a B lay down and I'll lay down uh, in my bedroll and close my eyes tightly and just bring the top of my bedroll to my face. And I'm like, no. No, no. You hear the sound of tapping like this. Like fingers tapping on a table. What do you do? I, I ignore. I turn around the other way. Wherever the sound is coming from, I turn the opposite way. I'm like, no, <laughs> no. Screw off, you evil wench! <laughs> you hear the tapping continue. And you hear... <laughs> Falfa. And that is where we're going to take a break for this evening. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for watching. Um, as for any of you that may have joined us after we started, uh, we are giving away a legendary Rod of Initiative from Brothers Forged. Um, to enter to win, all you have to do is put Brothers 
B-R-O-T-H-E-R-S into the chat only once, more than once you'll be disqualified and you'll get a chance to win it from the wonderful people over at Brothers Forged. Um, we'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome to Dwarven Forge. This is everything you need to know about our terrain in 60 seconds. Ready? Let's go. We hand sculpt our pieces for maximum detail and artistry, infusing passion into every millimeter of our work. Everything is available beautifully hand painted so you can start playing right away. Or you can choose unpainted to paint everything yourself. Our pieces are completely modular so you can use the same sets to create a new adventure every time. Most pieces have embedded anchor magnets that affix to our terrain trays for secure building and for revealing rooms as your players discover them. We create everything out of Dwarvenite, our top secret PVC formula that's nearly indestructible. We pack our pieces with as many features as possible, such as swappable LEDs to quickly change the look of your scene. We offer magnetic accessories to add flavor or increase the danger. A one-inch tactical grid is sculpted into our floors, hidden in dungeon flagstones, natural rocks, or sticks and plants. In addition to sculpted pieces, we make terrain trays to use as a vibrant graphic base for your build. We offer a range of environments, including dungeons, caverns, cities, castles, sewers, forests, mountains, streets, burrows, ice, and hellscape. And that's just the beginning. We have a passionate fan base who can tell you all about it. And that's everything you need to know about Dwarven Forge in 60 seconds. The games we play are the stories we create. The fortress doors swing open. Every story is unique. And the sound of war drums rises. Sometimes our stories come to us when we least expect them. We need to be ready no matter where inspiration strikes. And sometimes our stories are told over great distances. No matter where your journey leads you or how your story is told. The games we play are the stories we create. Sirenscape can help make yours epic. Sirenscape is searchable, fast, and customizable from any device with no need to pre-install any sound. Adding epic atmosphere to your game has never been easier.
All right, welcome back. No. <laughs> and just a note for those that are entering the giveaway for the uh, Rod of Initiative, uh, it is only on YouTube. Um, so you only enter it into the chat on YouTube. I was asked to uh, clarify that. Falfer, as you mm -hmm. lie there, you continue to hear the sound of fingernails on a hard surface. And you hear a voice say, Falfer. Mm -mm. Um, I've missed you. Go away. That's no way to treat me. And you hear, you hear footsteps on the cold pavement. Okay. Coming so this in is what your I direction. Do. I, I angrily, like with frustration, pull my blanket off or my bedroll top off. Yeah. And I get up at this point, probably in my skivvies. I just don't care anymore. <laughs> yeah. Okay, fine. Fine. Let us discuss what is happening here. Because I will not have this anymore. You're destroying my sleep life. And it's terrible. Okay? So why don't you and I find a place to sit and we just discuss this. I will, I will give you what you need. Just tell me what you want. Just come on. And I'll try to convince her to talk it through. Yeah. And as you, as you stand up, you see, again, this gnarled, hunched, dark-skinned hag with horns that protrude and curl around her ears. And she walks along the side of the throne as she runs her fingers along the metal of the throne. She stops and, and she says- And do you have to be so creepy all the time? And she says, Father, come now. No one likes you. Let's have a discussion. That is Figure no out why. Way to speak to me. And look, look, sister, look who he's brought for us. And from the side, in a dark corner, you see her sister emerge, very similar in shape. And she looks over in Noggin's direction. And the sister says, hmm, fresh meat. Now you leave him alone. Listen, let's have a discussion. And you can see okay, you watch fine. as she almost glides ever so slightly over in the direction no, 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 now you stay where you are, okay? I will go get the chairs. I will try to go find a place we could sit and, no, no, come, we will have a discussion, let's go. And as you start to go, to... you feel like you're held in place within almost like a five foot cube. Like you, you hit kind of a, a surface, almost like a prison in your mind. And as you start to go again, you stop. Your body's still laying basically beneath you, almost like you're still tethered to your physical body. The sister kind of walks and then quickly walks across and stops right above Noggins and looks down. And then she gets down on all fours and she starts leave to him slink alone. over Noggin's body. And she goes, no, leave him alone. Do not, what are you doing? This one is different. Morgantha says, yes, quite like us, but not. And the sister continues to, to smell as nice. Morgantha kind of walks in your direction. And as she approaches, she walks till she's about a foot away from you. Fine. Let's, let's talk about this. And she snaps what? and your mouth shuts. No seam. Your body goes rigid as you stand. And she takes her finger and she sticks her nail into your forehead and you feel the cold of her claw enter the center of your forehead as your body starts to shake. You look over as you can't move at Noggins and the sister, you see her drive her claws into his belly and through these ethereal, almost like it's passing through. Uh, he's obviously corporal, like he's obviously solid, but her finger is just passing through like she's passing through a cloud and up into his sternum, up to the forearm. And you watch as Noggins just quietly, making no sound, 
shakes. At this point, she's got her second knuckle into your mind. Ugh. And it goes black. As Morelda, you wake. All is silent. Falfur and Noggin sleeping. Um, you kind of open one eye, semi-aware that you're supposed to be at doing a watch at one point. Sterling still standing in front of the windows. What do you do? Um, I'm just looking around. Does everybody look okay? Give me a perception check. All right. Add plus five. Ooh, that is a nat 20. Okay. For a 26 plus five, that is 30. a 30, 31. Okay. Uh, you can tell that Falfer and Noggins um, appear cold. Um, they're shivering a little bit, and you can tell that they're stirring in their sleep, and you can see sweat sort of pooling on their forehead and running down. Falfer's hair almost like matted with cold sweat. I, I go Sterling to wake him up. Fine. Hey, 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 wake up. Wake up. Um, for, and for both of them. You, like, as she says that, you feel the finger out of your head and you wake. Are you, you guys all right? You look really bad. Also, she's you back. feel really cold. She's she's back again. I do not I do not know what to do. I do not know. She's back. Oh, and I know what Noggins. he's talking. I know what he's talking about when he says she's back, right? Because yeah. this has happened before. You know right away. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, cr- uh, Noggins. 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 Yeah, I'll head to Noggins as well. Noggins, wake up! Noggins, wake up! <laughs> you wake up almost from a terrible nightmare. Um, you remember uh, the Feywild, this beautiful home, this beautiful meadow that you spent mo- m- much of your life in. And just before you just woke, you watched unmoving as everything died in that meadow. Everything wilted, turning to dark sludge until you stood in a sea, knee height in sludge, and then you woke. You feel weak, sweat dripping down your brow. You have lost eight points off your hit point maximum. <gasps> Falfer, you have lost five. All right, I'm just gonna be like, listen, you and me, okay. Falfer, explain. And I'm gonna go run. Uh, is there a fireplace in this room? Not in this room. Not in this room. I don't room. believe. I'm gonna go run to collect blankets or whatever. Yeah, you, you have blankets in your packs and things. So, I mean, what you have basically with you is what exists. There aren't a lot of blankets in the in the place that have survived time. Is there a way to light a fire in this room without it all? Yeah, th- there is there is flames? debris and rubble. You can absolutely gather what you can. I will do so as yep. this is all happening. Falfur, explain. And I as I run to like do all this. So I with uh, my my um kind of demotivated self go to Noggins and and say you you may not have encountered this before my my friend but uh, mm-hmm. the, the hags they torment us in our sleep and especially me and our old friend uh, Muskoka as well I don't know what you're talking about I don't no, this is bad. I know, I know. It's it's crazy. In your dreams, you probably did not. I don't know what you see, but I can tell you this: we must find a way to defeat these hags. Who? What torment. are you talking about? I know, I know. It's crazy. It's crazy. Um, we will we will get through this. Don't worry. Noggins, can you give me a nature check, please, with advantage? Oh. No.
21. With a 21. Uh, a distant memory of lore that almost feels like from a different lifetime. Uh, you do, as soon as he says hags, you remember that there is a creature who once was fae, but is now fiend, who can traverse into the land of dreams and into people's dreams and suck the life out of them. You have heard of creatures like this, but it's spotty. Um, and you're trying to recall almost like secondhand knowledge. Mm -hmm. oh. Oh. What kind of um, um, hag, hag, oh, hag was, was this? There, there were two of them. Uh, I have been, I have been visited by one in in the night before. Her name is uh, Morgan Morgantha Morgantha, Mor and she, she uh, yeah. introduced me to her lovely sister this time, um, who, as well, is uh, uh, I saw her uh, digging her fingernail in, into your body, and while you were sleeping, it was terrifying. Um, are you okay? I don't know what's happening. Um, if that, if if there was a a hag, um, like that, and it's targeting you, and and now me, I don't know why they would, why. Me either. Why, um. Trying to phrase this right. Um, after the dream, I woke up. It, one, do I know them by name? Do I know it's a night hack? Yeah. Okay. Um, secondly, um, do I feel like there's a lasting effect other than just feeling like my HP is sapped right now? HP. You, you know that the lasting effect is that your your strength will be sapped until, and you're not not sure how to make it better, but you just feel like it's a permanent sapping you've heard that they draw the life from people and people don't tend to get better um that you've heard of although we did have the vistani at some point lift a curse am i correct and they healed us am i wrong about that when we i, I feel like that's in our notes or my notes so I would, I might know that, but I don't know that. Give me an intelligence check. See if you can recall okay. the notes that you guys should have taken. Yes, I should have taken notes. Um, Previous yeah, note taker so, died. So that's a natural 20, but with a plus three, so okay. 23. 23. Uh, with a 23, uh, you remember that at some point, um, the person who was, I think it was you, who was drained, um, you got your full strength back. You can't remember, you, you guys have talked about it in the past and you thought it might have been somewhere around the Abbey and the Abbot may have been involved, but you're not exactly sure how that happened. Hmm. Or what effect caused it. So I'll, I'll relay that to, to Noggins. I'll be like, uh, uh, I have been affected by this before uh, and, and for others, it has not gone away. Like I remember our friend, Muskoka, who you have met, uh, he was not able to get rid of it so quickly. And then, but for me, I, 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 it happened. And then we met up with the the the, the deva, uh, and and I was healed. Um, so I really, that's all I know. I wish I knew more. Sterling, you can hear all this commotion um, at this point as well. You can decide if you come out of your century's rest or not. Yeah, I would, hearing that the hag has been here. Okay. And then Noggins, um, you also recall um, that these night hags have the ability to pass from the ethereal plane into this plane. And that is how they tend to enter the dreams of those that sleep. Makes sense. And they haunt the dreams. Yeah, them, yeah. Um, I, I just say... Um, uh, I may uh, I I study I I I I study dreams and I understand them, but they 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 cor they corrupt and 
they are pretty bad. Um, why? What did you do for a, a night hag to to mess with you? And what did I do? I just got here. He killed what? their sister. We destroyed their coven. I now didn't do remain. that. No, we did. And you're with us. Sorry about that. Yes, there are certain situations whereby if you associate with the Dawnbringers, we will not be bringing much Dawn at all to uh, to your life. It's 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 quite dangerous. You said that you study them. I um, well, I I, I dreams and 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 stuff like that is what I do, and that's kind of what they do too. So, and um, they use, uh, well, I'm from, when I wake up, I'm, I'm, I'm from the Feywild. That was my home. And uh, they used to be Fey too, but they're kind of gross now. Do you know of any way that we can pull them into corporeal form so we can finish this? I don't know about, um, pulling them into anything but they can they can kind of walk through whenever they want so maybe there's a way to trap them but i don't know how to do that one second my stomach's growling <laughs> sorry it's not growling anymore <laughs> yeah oh, i'm sure you're hungry, hungry. <laughs> we've all been through much I am, I don't know about the rest of you, but I've had enough of these eggs. I am I know so we tired. We I don't to... feel so good. I think I think one hit me for some reason. Oh. I saw we... really... if there's, Do you think when you mentioned there's a way to, there might be a way to trap them, or we should think of a way to trap them? Do you think there's a good way? Um, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I try to stay away from those type of beings. Um, they, they tend to be very mean. Yes. All the more reason That's to nice. destroy them now. What is it that they want? Uh, I just look at Falver. You must be dead. Everybody turns slowly towards Falver. <laughs> like, I, I, I don't know. Oh, I mean, maybe I, maybe uh, the babies, the children, they wanted. I don't know. I don't know. I'm sorry. I have no answers. They, um, they were cooking children into pies. I mean, people have were. Eaten. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> we wanted to stop them. Where, do you think that's where that little girl wound up? Oh, don't say that. Is he is terrible? Oh, it's it's been longer. It's been longer than a week since we had since we had killed their sister. Oh yes. And and I have a, I've heard no stories of new pies around. Should we just uh, go back to sleep? Yes. I will try. You should try. Yes, if we if we can, well, if we can muster. The 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 um uh the 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 the, the physical dream I think is above. Um, it'll help us at least a little bit. Um, do we have a do we have a fire? We do now. We do. I've been we do now, yeah. One, and I'll do a, I'll do just to help uh, Noggins fall asleep. I, I know it's only ten minutes, but I'll do a protection from evil and good on, from fiends on Noggins. Okay. To help him fall asleep. Okay. All right. Cool. You all sleep the rest of the night. 
you wake in the morning as the dreary lack of sunlight beams through the windows in the in the front of the the uh, audience hall. Um, but that blue glow from the beacon can kind of be seen through the ceiling. Um, and that light is much brighter than the light coming through from the day. It's drizzling outside as you all kind of come to. Falfur and Noggins, you did not receive the benefits of a long rest. That's the, rude. The rest of you have. <laughs> That's rude. Why you pick on me? I didn't ask for this. <laughs> What do you all do? You don't do that to a druid. <laughs> <laughs> you don't do that to a druid. But technically, that means I'm quite low. Okay. Yes, um, I'm very. I'll uh, I'll get out of my bedroll, barely awake. Be like, fine. That day is over. That night is over. Let's just hit the road. Do hit we at least grinder. get a short rest, but just not a long rest? Um, I'll allow that. I mean, yeah, we've at least an hour. We slept for at least an hour. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. And it's yeah, it's yeah. not a matter of not being able to sleep. You could sleep, but it's just not restful sleep. From well, I mean, on. like before so, yeah. before the things happen. Yeah. We'll say that. We'll say you can have a, a short rest. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Uh, as a teenager, I'd like to just keep sleeping in. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm assuming you all gather in the audience hall as you start mm. to. Uh, Dimitri, you come to very rested. Um, feeling actually quite warmed by the evening and what had happened. Um, Savid awake, tries to wake you, Travas, and shakes you awake. Um, and when he doesn't succeed, he heads to the audience hall where he hears the commotion kind of happening and people starting to, to rise. What do you do? Savid, welcome. Are you hungry? Yes, I, I could eat. Absolutely. Thank you. I'll put something together from the pantry. Is there any anything in there that's edible? There is nothing, nothing. in this house that's edible. No, no. You'll have to eat rations. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll give him... Old crackers. Actually, I don't have rations. I don't... We still have any more of those steaks? Um, sorry, I only uh, borrowed five of them and we ate them all. Yeah. Mm. All right. Uh, we can eat spiders. Can, can we eat spiders? <laughs> <laughs> you can absolutely try. I mean, uh, you can. <laughs> but when in Barovia, I'm going to go and take uh, a leg because let's be honest, there's a. From there's those like large ones? 72 legs available. Yeah. I'm going to grab a leg and I'm going to try to roast it over the fire and see how it goes. People people eat spiders in the it, world. Okay, so a giant is. spider leg is they're probably not king like crab a, legs. <laughs> no, they're spider legs and and people eat spiders. All right, I'm going to grab a leg as you I'm eat it. Toast it over fire. Yeah, you start to toast it. Um doesn't smell great, but you start to toast it. Give me a con save, please. It's delicious. Uh, I think we'll find out. 15. With a 15, you manage to eat it. It's not super good uh, or tasty, but it's, it's sustenance. Not terrible. And you've mm, eaten worse in the I love yet. it. Mmm, crunchy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, I'm going to grab a couple extra and put them in my pack. Okay. So, Ava, do you know anything about hags? Hags? I'm afraid I do not. Sorry, wrong accent. I'm afraid I do not. <laughs> all right, thank you. Does <laughs> Falfer have a mark on his head? No. I do not. But Sterling, does Sterling still have his mark on his head? Yes. Oh, yeah, I haven't tried to buff that yet. Um, yeah. Maybe while everybody's eating, I'll be trying to like buff my forehead. <laughs> Just like trying to get that back to shine really, again. I mean, I, was the hags again? Did I miss that? Oh, Dimitri, you will never, you'll never believe it. They came to us again in the night. Uh, same kind of, I tried to 
I tried to talk with them, but they are not, uh, how would you say, uh, amenable to a discussion. So they uh, came to my forehead and then they they poked right into my brain. I could feel them wiggle around around my parietal lobe. And um, and they also did it to Noggins. Poor little Noggins who was so cute sleeping there. In the... It's terrible. They were all cold and sweaty. Have you ever had a dream that you that you want you you want to you want you wish you you? Want... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, my my kids do that all the time. <laughs> sorry. Um, and, but he does start that and he gets kind of just just kind of drowns out. Uh, um, mm. well, there's going to be a way to to vanquish these. Uh, Jay, really quickly, uh, I did ask this, and it's on my head. Being a dreams druid, more than anything, not just being a druid, being a dreams druid, knowing someone has infiltrated my dream, do I have any inkling that this wasn't... Obviously, I know it wasn't Barovia, but do I have an idea of, like, is there a connection? Like, can I sense that person or anything like that? Or was it just, like, they just infiltrated and they did their thing? Um, can you mean, can you sense them still? Not still, but like, could I have tried to like, even then, like kind of like get to feel who might have done that specifically? Because for someone to enter a dream like that, especially into a dream of a dream druid, I just feel like he would be able to feel something's more off than normal and like pinpoint why it's off. Um, Maybe I'm stretching too hard, but I just yeah, feel no, like- No, no, no. I mean, you would know, you would know now understanding what hags did, that it was a hag that did it. Yeah. Um, you didn't see them. The visions that you had weren't related specifically. They didn't make themselves known. You just had horrible nightmares is all you know of. Okay. Um, and you absolutely sense that something has invaded your dreams and caused this. And you okay. know the, the, the means by which it happens. But other than that, that's all kind of that you're able to glean. Valid. That that's valid. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Savin um, says, um, "What is the plan for this day?" Yes, we must make it to Bone Grinder. Uh, Sterling, do you mind if I hop into the harness for this trip? Of course. Thank you. And um, so I'll just climb up onto uh, to Sterling's back. And what? Get into the harness. Yeah. That thing is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it makes us a walking turret. <laughs> uh, I can. Um, sorry, I'm just not feeling that good. I can. You want to climb on me? Oh, sorry, that was a little too Borat. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to climb on top, please? <laughs> I give you a good ride. <laughs> N n no, I was going to offer the opposite if oh. someone um, didn't want to use their feet that much. But you're very tired. I, I could know. carry you. You can't carry me. Um, maybe. Or are you saying that you have a harness as well? I... Uh, um, Noggin's just kind of steps away and like kind of looks at the ground and kind of just like cracks his neck and then just again just prat falls and as he does he turns into a giant goat oh wow a giant goat it is a large goat oh man rations for everybody wow <laughs> i can do something similar but I'm how big is a giant goat it is large so it it's is a large creature uh, 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 10 by 10 yeah. Wow, that's not small at all. Yeah, no, it's it takes small. up a ten by ten area. Yeah. Large goat. A large goat. <laughs> you don't mind? You don't mind that if I? He gets. I guess. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Esmeralda, Esmeralda, do you, what is he saying? <laughs> can we ride on him? You get the sense that yes, he's saying that you can ride him. <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't speak. I mean, yeah, if he lets you, but. Okay, I will. I, I haven't even ridden a horse, so I don't know. I'm going to try to climb a board, that, like, just grabbing on the tufts of fur to pull yep. myself up. And... Yep. 
I, I, and I'll just kind of lay flat, lay I, like lay flat on top, hugging. Okay. Yep. From right. from the back harness with all of my limbs dangling out, I'll turn to Travas and say, "You look ridiculous." <laughs> I've never ridden a goat before. <laughs> oh. Nagi's kind of like. Be normal and just starts to walk. <laughs> oh man, he's like, "What are you doing?" Yes. Hashtag be normal. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> all right, so you all gather outside of Argenvostholt. You say goodbye to Godfrey, and you say that you will return at some point in the future. Um, where are you all headed? So uh, Sevet explains that the only places he hasn't really searched is Lake Baratok or and Lake Zarvich. Um, where would you like to go? I think they say when to go. I don't know. I, look, I don't know Barovia as well as y'all do. It's Bone Grinder before any of that. No. So yeah, both, after that. Bone Grinder right? is past. So Bone Grinder past is east that, right. along the Svalik Road towards uh, past Falaki, east and then south a little bit. It's about um, an hour and a half to Bone Grinder from where you are now. Oh, well, that's nothing. Yeah. Let's just go. You can go yeah. Barovia four hours end to end. So, okay. so maybe we'll hit Bone Grinder first, and then hit, go to what was Zarvich one of the yeah. Zarvich and Baratok, yeah. yeah. Zarvich, okay. Maybe we'll hit Zarvich first, and then Baratok after. Okay. All right. So you the Bone Grinder, Zarvich, Baratok. Yeah, and then we're on close the enough to the Bone Grinder if we need to rest, yep. we can head back. Okay. It's it's early, um, the equivalent of about six or seven in the morning. Um, after you've had a quick bite of rations, you head on the road. As you travel the road, you see the odd Barovian pass, you know, dismal head down um, as you continue through the road. And this is the first time you've been outside of Argenvostholt since um, you lighting the beacon. Um, unfortunately, on top of it, um, because you didn't get a long rest, you also have one level of exhaustion Fulfur and Noggins. So that is mm. disadvantage on ability checks. You know who I don't like? What's Just that? take a guess. <laughs> Hags? Disadvantage. Ah, oh, that's great. All right. You head west. Uh, sorry, you head east. Uh, so north to the Svalik Road. You head east along uh, the road, passing over a bridge. You end up at Velaki, but you make your way around it rather than through it. Um, curling around again south until Bone Grinder starts to come into view. And you see the, the familiar burnt out husk of the windmill ahead. Can we check around the perimeters just for safety? Yeah, absolutely. Give me a perception check. Uh, Jay, just so you know, it doesn't affect passives. Mm. Well, actually, right. kind of, but my passive is 18. Okay. Even still as a goat. Yep. Okay. 16 for me. Okay. Um, it doesn't seem to be any immediate danger that you notice. Uh, it is pretty much how you left it. Um, as you approach the door, um, it is, I think you guys locked it, did you not? You put some sort of lock on the door. You, you, you fixed the door a we bit did. and you locked it. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So you put the lock, there's nothing left, but you put the lock in and as you open it up, you see that there is a small pile of packages. Uh, there's a box, there's some rolled up letters and some items that have been left for you for the last, they, I don't know how long. Amazon on them. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> um, by the Vistani. Um, there, the is a, there is a slight um, scent of um, mold um, that exists and emanates from the pile. Um, but the first thing that you find um, is a box tied with a blue ribbon, a ribbon um, with a note. And it says, Dearest Sterling, I hope you and your friends are well. I hope these items can be of use to you on your journey. Mama Sari loves the little boy inside. Never lose him. As for the big guys, kick some werewolf vampire butt. Uh, and that is from Sari. Um, love, Sari, a.k.a. Rose Silverfist, a.k.a. Mama Bear. The box contains... Uh, Three common healing potions. You make sure you take these notes down and add them to your character I sheet. I got your notes. Two vials of common nice. poison. Ten regular crossbow bolts. 
and some cinnamon buns that are no longer edible, which you imagine can is I, what that smell is from. Can I get those crossbow bolts if that's okay? Yes. Thank as you. long as everyone else is in agreement. There's another right. bundle um, that is addressed to Sterling and Company. Uh, it says, Dear Sterling Amalgam and Party, I write this to you hoping you are well and safe and finding that which you need to return some semblance of sanity and safety to us all. I pen these words to share of stranger events since you have departed our task. The mists swirl and menace and the nights have a chill in them blowing off of the mount mountain Gacchus. My interaction with blood muzzle disturbs me. The references are cryptic and menacing, both for us and for them. We will defend our own and can handle ourselves here, I hope. Know that my thoughts are with you as you explore and find what you can. It was very heartening to see the blood rite performed and you officially added to our task. Know that you are forever family, forever Vastani, and I am proud to call you family. My Vardo and my campfire are ever open to you should you need warmth and shelter, and my magics and power are at your disposal. You need but ask. Kindest regards, Zakariel. Ingler Inglariotius. <laughs> I wonder um, why he underlined some letters squiggly. And that is from Zakaro. Uh, uh You then see another note that says, Hail Dawnbringers. May this letter find you, uh, find you and find you well. Know that we Vistani of Gacchus are with you. you light, uh, the light is with you in your endeavor and you, we know, sorry, you will succeed in riding this land of the dark, rid, <laughs> wow, ridding this land of the darkness that consumes it. <laughs> Stop drinking before the stream. Kidding. Uh, <laughs> little by little, your good deeds show the souls of Barovia hope, resilience, and freedom. We will do our part. My hope is we draw the eye and ire of, de of the devil enough to keep you free to move in these lands and do what you need to do. A cause I and the light will serve proudly. The light be with you. And Ari Vitir, Corvin Dwendolis. And then he said, P.S. When I'm sad, I sing this. I can't believe he's making me sing. <laughs> Once there was a magical elf who lived in a rainbow tree. He lived downstairs from a flatulent dwarf who constantly had to <laughs> wee. One day the elf could take no more. So he went to bang on the rude dwarf's door. And what do you know? They suddenly both were married. And that's from a grain, Gokraina. Uh, humble servant of Bahamut. <laughs> nice. Beautiful. Wow. All right. Um, there is another note that says, Dear Sterling, <laughs> I hope you and your companions are well. You guys have been away for a while. <laughs> Many interesting things have happened at, at Camp Gacchus involving the mountain. We came across a stronghold of Argenvost. I think your friend Godfrey may be interested in that information. I pray for all of your safety in the battles to come. That's from Misery. Hmm. There was another note. Um, Dear Sterling Amalgam and the Dawnbringers, I hope you are well in this letter and the package finds you successfully continuing your quest to return sunshine to this dark land. I hope the other items you have received have been put to good use, which you just received. So you can tell that this letter actually was sent quite a bit after the first one. <laughs> Expecting that we would have got the first yes. one first and then the, yeah. Uh, I am enclosing a dagger for Esmeralda magically imbued to strike true on most of the hardier denizens of the darkened lands of Barovia. Wow. May she find it to be useful. Is there, if there is anything else I can do to be of assistance and help, please do not hesitate to let me know. I am ever your humble task brother, humbly yours, Zakariel. And that is a plus one dagger for you, Esmeralda. <gasps> Look nice. at this dagger! That is so cool! Uh, oh, and man. I'm just like, I'm just like Beautiful. leveling it and oh. as it goes yeah, whooshing, it's... whooshing in the light. I'm just like, look at that craftsmanship. <laughs> look at that craftsmanship. Uh, there is another uh, note um, addressed to you, Esmeralda. It says, Dear Esmeralda, I have found a charred scroll case with the initials ED inscribed into it on the banks of Lake Baratok near the old tower. When I opened it up, it contained this scroll and you can tell it's one of your scrolls, and this is the remove curse that was in your Varda when it exploded. I believe this may have belonged to you. If not, then please accept it anyway as a gift. 
May Moradin and the Morning Lord look over you all. Barf battle brain of Clan B. <laughs> I never uh, thought I'd say this again. <laughs> for those of you at home, these are all <laughs> things that have been crafted and given to our party from our Discord community. Dear Dawnbringers. <laughs> because some things have blown up and got lost <laughs> in the fires. Yeah. Dear Dawnbringers, I was asked to make this for one of uh, the one named Falfer. Question mark. Though I have yet to meet him, I hope this helps in your fight against the darkness. May the light in your hearts stay bright, even on the darkest of nights. This is from Sari. And uh, can, uh, that's appropriate. In a bundle is a plus one hand crossbow. What? As it that's gleams the one I and told you about. and is polished. When I first met you, I said, Mama Bear, she made you a plus one crossbow. Here it is. <laughs> that's amazing. New bolts and new crossbow. It's like a, a holiday festival that we don't really like do here. It's birthday. But... <laughs> it's like Strad Day. Life Day. Life Day. While this That's is amazing. all happening, yeah. Noggins in goat form is just casually, like, not eating, <laughs> chewing uh, Dimitri's hair. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's good. This is great. Um, there is another small box uh, filled with... Uh, you guys ready for this? Four okay. potions of healing. Ten silvered crossbow bolts wrapped in cloth. And a note from Corvin that says, Dawnbringers, I hope you find these and they serve you well. Continue fighting the good fight and know the light will follow. Light be with you, Corvin Dwendalos. Yes. There is another note. Dawnbringers, you have truly given the land and the people here hope with the beacon. Its glow on the horizon is a reminder to all that darkness can and will be pushed back. Light be with you, with us all, Corvin Dwendalos. And there's a small box with two more healing potions and a light crossbow and 20 regular bolts. Oh, we have to start a fan club or something. Maybe like, uh, you know, like uh, Patreon slash Dunbringers. There's a lot of meta happening this session. There's a lot of like real world meta and it's killing me. <laughs> you said you said um, another crossbow and 10 regular bolts? One light crossbow, 20 regular bolts, and two healing potions. Two f- in that one. Yeah. Okay. A folded yeah. note. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, you're good. Okay. A folded note is pinned to a stuffed backpack with Travas. His name written on it. There once was a warrior. For me. There once was a warrior named Wyatt, who could not keep himself quiet. He boasted and screamed, claiming he was supreme, but no one who heard him would buy it. If you know thieves can't, which I believe you do. I do. Um, uh, should I read it aloud, or should I have everyone take out their ears that can't understand thieves can't? It depends how big of a thing it is, I guess. I don't know. Nah, it's fine. Um, It translates to, if you know thieves can't, people like us can't toss around fireballs or heal with a touch, but we can work our own kind of magic with a stocked bag of tricks. Hope this helps with your fight. Dustin from Clan Waddleby. Hmm. And this backpack contains one hunting trap, two potions of healing, Five sets of ball bearings, five caltrops, or five sets of caltrops, one grappling hook, one vial of acid, wow, one alchemist fire, and one yeah. antitoxin. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, what was after the grappling hook? One ac- vial of acid, stuff. one mm. alchemist fire, okay. and one antitoxin. Okay, okay. <clears throat> wow. And then there's one final uh, bu- little awesome. bundle. Uh, and as you open it up, it says from Corvin on the on the a little card, and it's two vials of holy water for the party. Wow. Amazing. And that thank is you thank you to the Discord community for and the yeah, Vistani for you. crafting these items and gifting them to our party. Bravo. All right. Yes. You now stand in the husk, burnt husk of um of the windmill. Um it bringing back some memories. Um, memories of Muskoka with one of his most heroic moments in the Cone of Silence. 
um, or casting silence, not cone of silence. Um, and the last time you fought and saw the hags in the material world, on the material mm. plane. Um, what do you do? I forgot this place. It's uh, it's almost too much. <laughs> having dreamt about the hags last time and defeated our last hags here when we did. Yeah, do we want to stay here? Well, maybe a safe place. I don't imagine they'd want to return here. But, um, I don't know. We have things that we wanted to do today. Yes, we mustn't stay long, actually. We should probably go to Zarvich, um, then. Lake Zarvich, was it? Yes, it is. Yes. Uh, what, do, what do I know of this place? Like, can the bar party just tell me about it? Like, what, what would I have known before I got here? Because You just knew it was a windmill where they sold meat pies and some of the best meat pies in the land. And now it's just... It's a burnt husk of a dawn. windmill, yeah. Okay. Um, he says it is only a little ways back. And as, as he leads you for about half an hour up to the banks of Lake Zarvich, at the foot of the mountain nestled in the misty forest is a large lake. The water is perfectly still and dark, reflecting the black clouds overhead like a monstrous mirror. And as you kind of um, approach the banks, or not the banks, the shore of Lake Zarvich, you see a 30 by 30 foot dark stone keep that is some 30 feet or so from the shore. Um, it rises three, four stories in the air, ending in battlements on top. You see the edge of ballistas over the edge, two massive wooden doors shut. Um, and the depiction of ravens inscribed on the four kind of posts of the keep. I was going to say, it looks like Strahd's reach is expanding, but he doesn't usually associate with the image of ravens. Uh, Travas, this is new to you. Um, you've been to Exarvich many times. You've never seen this here before. Pulled up along the shore, you see three small rowboats. A fourth boat can be seen in the middle of the lake with a lone figure sitting in it, fishing pole in hand. What do you do? Um, Savage, where exactly should we be looking in this place? Just anywhere in this area? Perhaps along the banks? I, I don't know. I, perhaps we should, maybe we split up and head around the edge of the banks and of the shore. It would take us maybe an hour to meet on the other end. How how far away is that guy in the boat? Uh, he is out in the middle of the lake, um, 400 feet from the nearest shore, from where you are now. Mm. Oh, okay. So nothing we can get a good look at. Give me a perception check. Okay. Okay. 19. Okay. 13. Is there anything? Yeah. I, yeah. Used in my passive as a goat. Um, <laughs> yeah. With 24. Okay. <gasps> with a 19 and, okay. With a 19, you see that this, it, it's a hulking individual, kind of hunched over, fishing pole in hand, um, but kind of looking straight out over the water. Um, and with the 24, um, Sterling, some of the mechanics kick in and, um, your vision sees that he's muttering. Even at the 400 feet, you can see him kind of talking to himself. Um, and as you watch, he, he puts his fishing pole down. He reaches down into the boat. And he grabs what looks like a um, 
a bundle of burlap tied up. It's about four feet long. And he heaves it into the water. Oh, he basically rolls it over the edge of the boat into the water as it splashes. Is it Arabelle sized? You absolutely, for the 24, think that it is the size of a small child. Oh, man. Oh, man. It's time to swim. <clears throat> um, do I recognize this individual, like, from Gakkus or anything? Um, with the 24, you actually recognize him from Velaki. S- some time ago, oh. almost, the la- well, the last time you were in Velaki, which actually in, in game terms wasn't that long ago, uh, but maybe a, uh, I think it was a week or two ago, maybe. Um, and he was he was speaking craziness and he was the one that was yelling out about the zombies attacking the town um but he right. was what you remember to be a bit of a drunkard um kind of a a town outcast the burlap okay. sack disappears under the surface of the water can't seem to tell what's over there looks almost like he threw something about the size of a child into the water what I recognize him from Volaki. He ran up to us, screaming about the zombies. He's a a bit of a drunk. Well, we must go then. Um, Yeah. I think maybe I should um, make my way into the water and over to him. Are you... Or, or, hear me out. (laughs) We tell the the leader of the village... Are you saying this stuff out loud? Savid hears you say what she saw, and Savid r- rushes for the shore and jumps into the water, dives in. Um, did you okay. see there were other boats? Noggins, as a goat, so Wild Shape is, Wild Shape is different from Polymorph. He's still him. Um, hmm. And he hears and like in notes with the 18 could he tell that it was like the burlap sap thing not that it was a person but like he could at least tell what with, it was with a passive i'd say no um just because again if you're actively looking for something there's certain things that you're looking for that the passive doesn't necessarily cover um and so if, if you want to give me a perception check i can i can give you that um it's a disadvantage can i ask was the was the uh was the burlap sack doing kind of this or was it just Still, when it was dropped. What did you roll with the perception? I haven't yet, in fact. Oh. At disadvantage for me, that's a 23. It's a natural one, actually. Okay. You saw nothing. You still don't even see the boat out in the middle of the water. Um, okay. Noggins with a 23. Uh, sorry, what were you asking, Noggins? If you noticed? Uh, if I could tell that the, the uh, it, 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 what the burlap sap was, or at least that it was a burlap sap, that something fell into the water. It was this shape of a small child. Noggins... Um, Savage is about to... ten feet, sorry, from the from the shore, trying to swim as fast as he can. Noggins shoves Travas off of him. Yep. Um, and starts to rush into the water. And as he gets into the water, you see the form drop, but he turns into something else. I'm turning into a giant seahorse. Okay. Ooh. All oh, right, Strad, Are we all going swimming right now? What are we doing? I have a speed of forty feet. I'm going towards the girl. Go, going towards the thing. Give me a yeah. athletics check. <laughs> okay, one second. Anyone else while he's checking? Oh, yeah. I'm going to get some swim in top speed. There were other boats you had said, right? Yeah. Anybody who's attempting to jump in the water to swim, give me an athletics check. And I'm going to stay on the... I'm attempting to try to get a boat if there's Matt, one. I only have a plus one 13. That. I start um, to get down to my undergarments 15 so that I for can me. go for a swim. Okay. I just get ready with the rope, Jay, at yeah. the shoreline yeah. to try to bring whomever in might be struggling. Okay. Did you do disadvantage on that uh, check? I did. I take, did. Take your higher one. I'm going to say because you're a seahorse and you went underwater, we'll take. Uh-huh. We'll, you would have gotten advantage. So whatever your so highest roll was. It would be. Oh, then that was actually higher. That would have been a um, 18. Okay. All right. Sorry. So How say far that again, Joel. Did you say he was? 400 feet. Oh shoot! No, that's not my. No. Sorry, Joel. Was <laughs> I'm that... not within my range. I was just waiting at the shoreline with a rope in case uh, they got close and they needed someone to throw okay. a rope out to them. Okay, so you're you're waiting. Uh, Dimitri and Esmeralda, you're trying to get a boat? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. you're able to push the rowboat in. You get in, and you start to row out. Mm-hmm. 
Can I get a uh, athletics check for both of you, please? Or actually, whoever wants to... Um, yeah, both gave me an th athletics check then. Okay. Natural uh, 20. Nice. Esmeralda? <laughs> Uh, for, oh, even for getting a boat? Yeah, because you, you guys are getting in the boat to, to, uh, you start. Oh, God. So you said athletics check? Yeah. All right. Oh, it's a seven. Mm. Okay, so with your natural 20, the boat just goes in a circle. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're rowing on one side really well, and she's not, yeah. and so it's just circle. Yeah. No. That's no. terrible, Jay. <laughs> you, you start to go quite quickly, and with your natural 20, you know, you grab both and you're just like heaving it. Um, you manage to get across the water towards the boat um, just as Noggins. Give me a investigation check, please. Um, me? No, uh, Noggins. No, oh. this is going to be fun. Uh, actually, for me right now, not bad. That is a 12. Okay. All right. So you dive under into this murky darkness that is Lake Zarovich. It is hardly any um, visibility that you have, um, but you're able to at least see where the boat was and more or less tell where she was. And you, by circling around, your tail touches what you think is the sack that settles close to the bottom. Um, Dimitri and Esmeralda, you basically come to the boat and this character who is in the boat has his fishing rod out and he's just staring straight out and just kind of like rocking in the boat okay wow when we get to him i'm gonna say you what are you doing why did you just toss in the water uh, he's unresponsive just continues to look forward um i'll go right up next to him yeah and i'll put my reach out put my hand on his shoulder and try to shake him a little okay so you reach out and you shake him and he turns to you and you can see he's kind of like hazy you see that there are empty bottles of wine um on the bottom of the boat you see that he's dirty and messy and he just looks at you and he says she will bring me luck she will bring me luck she will bring me luck. Does he look cursed? Arcana check. Uh, religion check, if you're asking about cursed. All right. Ooh, 14? Uh, you don't think he's cursed. He just looks disoriented more than anything. You don't think there's anything um, weird about him in that way, like he's under any sort of control. Noggins, your tail hits this bundle. What do you do? Uh, I try to scoop it up and try uh, to bring it back up. I upward. guess in your tail? In my, either in my tail or my like my mouth or something. I'm a giant seahorse. Yeah, so I'd say so, probably around your tail and then you can yeah. like, okay. <laughs> I don't know the seahorse anatomy all that well. But <laughs> they, they have little fins, right? Little fins and they, long. They do. Okay. <laughs> so you're like, you... You go up to the to the surface. You do feel that the that the bundle is um, squirming in your grasp a little bit, but halfway up it stops squirming as your the the seahorse head breaks the water. Um, Dimitri, you see the seahorse head break the water. Esmeralda, you see the seahorse break the water. Sterling, you are now beside their boat in the water. What do you do, all of you? Um, so is the seahorse close to us? Our boat? Yes, just at the edge of the boat. I would have Can seen I... him turn into the seahorse, right? Like You saw I him go in the water and change. Um, I'm going to say, for the sake of brevity, that you know it's Noggins. Okay. Do I see this the sack? You do not, because it is still under the water in his grasp. Uh, I'll definitely try to um, maneuver myself to get the sack above the water. Okay, so he lifts uh -huh. the sack yeah. and... He, uh, I guess I'll grab Esmeralda and, and Demetri, yeah. you're able to pull it over and it is unmoving currently. Okay. Uh, what did you I... find? <laughs> the guy for the guy in the boat. Yeah. Could I use evil eye charm person on him to try to get him to talk? You can absolutely try. 
So can you make a, a it doesn't say what kind of save. Uh, for Charm Person, is it a is it a will save or was it a, uh, mm, I think it? it's a wis wisdom Charisma? save. I thought it was a for... wisdom. I think it's wisdom. We're all saying the same. <laughs> yeah, hang on, uh, Charm Person. Let me just look it up real quick. <clears throat> Maybe wisdom? What's the, uh, what's the, the DC? The DC is 14. On a wisdom check, I think. Um, you see him, you see him start to t turn towards you. Um, and he, he kind of looks at you and then shakes it off and looks back down at the water. And as he sees you pull her, she's like, no, 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 please, please, no. I'm gonna open the, open the bag. Okay, as you rip the, the, you just basically rip the sack open, you see inside um, a girl with alabaster white skin and raven black hair that kind of spills out, um, waterlogged, uh, unmoving, and looks like she's starting to go blue. Uh, I'm gonna use right away lay on hands and I'm just gonna see what healing for five points does. Okay. Um, you heal and again, this bluish uh, energy coalesces that turns into this green putridness as um, <clears throat> she is still unconscious. Um, can I do, can I do a check to see if there's anything I can do to medicine check? Uh, are they 11. still on the boat? Yeah, so you see 400 feet away, you see movement on the oh boat. Oh my gosh. Um, you see something come over the side. You can kind of tell what's happening. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm just gonna keep swimming around, but when they get close, oh. I'm gonna get dressed again. Sorry, what, what, you're like just having, you're just swimming? Yeah. Yeah, that's, just uh, swimming. I, I had an out one, everybody jumped in the water. Oh. I thought we were just going for a swim. So he's just like <laughs> swimming around by the shore. <laughs> okay, got it. That, that's all he <laughs> thinks is going on. That's, I like it. Okay, cool. Did, did Savad catch up? Uh, rolled low, Savage just pulls up now and kind of tries to clamber into the boat and clambers into the boat and looks down. He says, that is Wait. her. That's Arabelle. Quickly, do a something. Medicine check. Uh, yeah, medicine check? What is it? 11. An 11. Uh, some of your training comes back from um, being able to, uh, some of your, your combat training, and you start to uh, perform CPR as <clears throat> water pours out and she starts to kind of wheeze, her eyes firing open as she turns to the side and water pours out of her mouth. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna hold her while she has to yep. let the water out. Yep. And I said, she's alive. She's alive. I said that to Savage. Okay. And he's like, oh, Arabelle, Arabelle. She kind of looks around and she starts to, and you guys are right alongside the other boat. And as soon as she sees him, she starts to kind of move and she's still tied. You can tell that her hands under further down the sack and she starts to kind of move towards him and almost like, almost trying to like bite and kick at this other person in the boat. As she starts to at scream at the top of her seven? lungs. At the, 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 her captor. Oh. Um, okay, how close am I to his boat? You, uh, you guys, you're right there. You're like basically like between the two boats. I weigh a lot, so I'm gonna grab the side of his boat and I'm gonna start making it sink. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna start to capsize it. Okay, are you, are you capsizing it quickly or are you just letting water into it? Uh, I'm, I'm gonna start slowly letting water into it and okay. look as intimidating as I can. Okay, so. give me an intimidation check and an athletics check, please. All right, athletics. If it's not fire, <laughs> 22. <laughs> you know, the dice are working pretty well today, and uh, I'm glad I'm saying that at the end of the session. So, yeah, <laughs> uh, 22 for athletics. Intimidation is not going to be as good, I'm sure. Oh, 19. Okay. Um, he, he, he looks, he's more concerned. He sees the water starting to rush in, um, but he's not reacting the way that you expect him to react oh. out of fear. Um, but he looks at Arabelle and, and you can see like the wind come out of his sails, like all hope is lost all of a sudden. And he kind of drops the pole and he, sit, and he put, drops his hands into his lap as the water begins to rush in 
around his ankles and starts to to to, to raise in the boat um uh while the, the water's filling i'm just gonna grab his like the scruff of his clothes yeah and as um intense as i can i'll say who told you to kill this girl he he, tur- he turns to you and and as clear and as as straight or deadpan as possible he says i thought you would bring me luck i thought i would catch more fish the vistani are lucky okay i i'll <laughs> just let him so go what do you even I'm say to that start to push him under the water <laughs> <gasps> can I help? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The water now is up to his like waist as the boat starts to tip this way and as he starts to go down. Do you put your hand on his how do you how do you start to, to push him under Dimitri? You guys are pulling a back all yao here. I'm I'm heavy, I don't need to breathe, so I'm thinking I'll like grab him yeah. and just sink. sink. Okay. Ah! Well, while while Dimitri helps. Okay, you grab um, him and he yeah. lets it happen. Okay. And you watch as Sterling disappears yeah. under the water, with and under uh, under the person. water, my, with my voice, I'll I'll say, "Bad luck today." <laughs> <laughs> That's like a, an eighties line. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm sorry, Adam. I feel like I stole this kill. I just, I'm kill steal kill stealing. I'm steal <laughs> killing. Yeah. I, well, you both did it. I mean, guys. Dimitri, you you watch as he kind of lets it go. He closes his eyes, and as he looks up at you, he closes his eyes. The water passing above his uh, above his mouth, over his nose, bubbles start to go as your hand is on his head, and you almost like you're providing some sort of holy benediction. Let him go under the water with Sterling. <sighs> Yeah, and then yeah, Sterling's weight is pulling him. Yeah, so he doesn't just float. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, as his as his face gets murkier and murkier, the lower it goes. Um, I'm just going to like stare at it intently until I can't see it anymore, and then I'll I'm just gonna go, hmm. and then turn back to see how the girl's doing. Okay. You turn back to watch as Savit has Arabelle's hand, head in her hands, and and he says, "It's okay, it's okay. He's gone, he's gone. It's okay." And she starts to kind of calm down, and she starts to look around at all of you. She's still coughing up water, kind of pooling down. She's a seven-year-old, pale, raven-skinned girl. Um, Savit immediately takes out a dagger and begins to cut her binds as she kind of like gets up and like up against the side of the boat she she kind of starts to take all of you in and you can see her her countenance turns from like anxiety to um like a stern um confidence and she looks out and she says take me to my father take me back to my camp I have been away too long. Take me now, Savit. Take me now. Um, that's are you in a boat still? Yeah. You guys are all still in the boat. Yeah, and you're still. You, you're still. I guess you're just. Your little horse head is above water. <laughs> yep, barely. Because I have to. <laughs> fun fact: in the notes, it specifically says, uh, "Giant seahorse can only breathe underwater." Uh, oh. So he's just like barely his eyes are just like yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, Noggins is so great. Yeah. <laughs> As you watch the character, uh, the 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 humanoid uh, f- under the water and with Sterling, Sterling, you hit the bottom, and by the time you hit the bottom, he's motionless. Okay, um, is there a rock down there? Can I feel if there's a rock down there? Um, you look around, you can find a boulder. All right. Um, I, knowing, knowing that dead people have a habit of coming back and potentially chasing us or whatever, I kind of want to destroy his brain somehow. Um, I hand, Brent, I hand, uh, Sterling my silver dagger. 
She, she he's he's way underwater All, at, this at the point. bottom of the lake. Oh, so, yeah. can yeah, I just I, drop it down towards? <laughs> <laughs> well, I do have my sword, so That's I mean, right. I, I might there. just I might just go <laughs> scramble some me. brains. I, I think Zilligus is coming through a little bit right now, but okay. um, yeah, scra- scramble some brains and okay. uh, hopefully uh, there won't be any okay. revenants happening. All right. Um, you make sure that hell? he's. You make sure that he's dead, dead, and now brainless. And uh, you watch as he kind of floats like this on the bottom, and you can watch him kind of sway in the murky darkness. Okay, and I'll stick that boulder on top of him so that if okay. he does come back, he can't yeah. get out. Um, okay. And then I'll swim my way back up to the top. Okay. You all watch as Sterling emerges. Ah, a yeah, fine you, wa- you watch as the purple of his eyes kind of comes, come, <laughs> rise to the surface and then break the surface. Oh my god, he's just... right next to Noggins. Yeah. He's two eyes below. Yeah. <laughs> so who's going to tell Travas what just happened? Uh, I'm still on the shore as yeah. well. So there, you guys are 400 feet out. I'll take my 50-foot rope and throw it in. <laughs> like... I vote Savid tells the story. <sighs> See, seeing that I'm coming back towards the shore, I will definitely get dressed again. Okay. And it's cold. Like this was a, but you're used to. Whoa, whoa, here. whoa! So. What does that matter? <laughs> no. <laughs> 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 That's not why I'm getting out early, Jay. <laughs> you know, Dave, because it's cool. <laughs> Oh, this is going to be on Instagram later. (laughs) (laughs) All right, guys. You all start to row back to shore. Uh, Noggins, you swim. Sterling, do you just swim back to shore? Yeah, I'll I'll swim back. You get back to shore, and uh, as soon as it hits, uh, Arabelle kind of stands up, obviously weak, but trying to show that she's strong. Uh, and she kind of stands, looking at all of you, and she says, We go. Please. I need to go yes. home. We take can bring home. you to your father. Yes. Please, take me home. Is that her? Oh, my Strad. How did you Stop live all it. the way out here? She looks at you like... I, I didn't think you would make it, honestly, but you did it. You must be very strong. She kicks you in the shin. Oh. Ah. And she turns around and walks south to the, starts walking on her own south to the road. That must have hurt. To go with her. <laughs> it wasn't bad. Savit kind of chases after her. Hey, I'll kind of slap uh, Travas on the back and go, <laughs> kids. Okay. Get the hit a lot. <laughs> usher him along. Yeah, I will. Um, I will uh, get to the edge of the uh, shore and, and turn back into uh, Noggins. And and follow them. Though I am out of wild shape for the deck, so mm. I'm just gonna tread along. <clears throat> all right, you all leave the keep and the lake behind you as you head to the road. Are you all heading to the camp at this point? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she's going. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. We okay. got to keep them safe. So. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Wow. I'll uh, I'll knock on Sterling's uh, elbow and ask if I could again just like you know my friend you mind if I uh... of course my soft footed friend and then I'll <laughs> soft footed this is my last name. your last name soft-footed. yeah thank you but it also represents I see what you did there wow yeah. well done Sterling mm-hmm. um because I'm in a harness um and and. <laughs> And I'll say, uh, uh, as we start moving towards the village um, of the camp, I'll say to Sterling, uh, Sterling, what uh, what transpired back there at the lake? Um, I saw uh, more people go into the water or were in the water than came out. Um, Let's put it simply. A man tried to murder a child, and he showed no remorse. So, Dimitri and I ensured that his fate matched that that he tried to apply to that kid. 
Mm. People such as that are not worthy of life. I guess uh, you find yourselves the judge and the jury of, uh, of Barovia then, huh? Barovia is better for it. Yes, there was a time uh, when I was uh, I was not so wise. I wonder what you would have done with me. I probably would have done the same, except it would have been the boy that time. Would he have done the same? I would. And that is where we're going to end the session for this <laughs> evening. Man. <laughs> And Brandon Perkins wow. with the cliffhanger Woo! for this uh. for this night. <laughs> Holy! Oh, is that tense? Oh, wow! Hey, just a little bit of murder. Thank you, everyone, <laughs> for watching. <laughs> As our Man. party turns into murder hobos. Yeah, murder hobos. Uh, it's about time. It took us three seasons. <clears throat> oh. Anyways. <laughs> Thank you everyone for watching. Make sure that you like that video to let people know that uh, this cast is as awesome as they are. Guys, holy crap. What an amazing session. That was fun, especially that second half. Wow. Uh, join us next week for Into the Mist, episode 11 of season three. Uh, as I said before, uh, we are gonna continue into Into the Mist for another season. We're not going back to Wild Mount because the mists won't let us leave. Um, the winner of tonight's Rod of Initiative, this is a legendary Rod of Initiative from Brothers Forged. Um, you are able to, when you get the code that we will be sending you, after you've won, you'll be able to choose whichever one you want from the site. The winner is John Hughes. Congratulations, John Hughes. You are the owner of a legendary Rod of Initiative from Brothers Forged. Thank you, Brothers Forged, for uh, providing us with that awesome giveaway and uh, for the one that we have here at the table that we can enjoy when everybody is back around the table. Uh, Thursday, Aftermath, we will have some of the cast on there to discuss what just transpired. Um, and all of the wonderful stuff and looking maybe into next season and, and what we'll be um, delving into and where the party might go. Love you guys. Take care of each other. Have Join a wonderful Discord. night. Go to the Discord. It's awesome. You can tell uh, the interaction is great. Um, and we all have players now. A lot of us have players on the Discord now that we play on kind of a weekly basis when the cast isn't around in the Discord um, because they're out doing casty things. Uh, have a good one, guys. Bye!